welcome to the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, where tonight a crowd of 75,000 plus is expected to watch the Los Angeles Raiders, who have already clinched at least a wild card in the coming NFL playoffs, go against the Detroit Lions. For the Raiders, they know that if week they can win tonight, they can defeat Pittsburgh next week. They have a chance of hosting their wild card game, their first one at home in Los Angeles. We'll tell you how that can come about a little later on. And for the Detroit Lions, while well, you hear things tonight with a 4-9 and 1 record, Don, uh, things like pride, self-respect, and certainly Gary Danielson uh, has played well over the past few weeks. I think that probably is the case, Frank. When you look at a guy right there, that's a very revealing stat over the last three weeks. He's been very well, but I, they're still saying around Detroit, hey, we don't have Hippo, and they always seem to kind of focus in on the quarterback anyway. They've only won four ball games. On the other side of the coin, OJ, you've got a team that has clinched the playoff, and Marcus Allen's had a whole lot to do with that. You talked about the last three weeks. The Raiders have finally been playing like Super Bowl defending champs. One of the reasons is Marcus Allen. He's averaged over six yards a, a run uh, over that period of time, and I'm sure Monty Clark has told his players that we're going to beat the Raiders. We're going to have to contain Marcus Allen. All right, Frank Gifford, along with Don Meredith and O.J. Simpson, all of us want to congratulate Eric Dickerson on his achievement yesterday, breaking O.J.'s record. He's at 2,007 uh, 2, yards, breaking Deuce's mark at 2,003. One of the greats to come into this game. You get to see him next Friday. I'm looking forward to that. And O.J. will be talking with Jim Lampley about Eric Dickerson at halftime. We're set to go. The Raiders will kick off. Pete Manley, a rookie from Northern Arizona, is deep, number 82, along with Alvin Hall, number 35. At high, Manley from the five yard line. And Manley out of the 15 to the 16 yard line, where he's stopped there by Chester Willis. And let's take a look at the offensive unit. Gary Danielson, who has had some big games, he has been the hottest quarterback over the past three weeks, other than the Bears' Steve Fuller, highest rated. But he has also given up quite a few interceptions. There is the remainder of the offensive unit. Ken Jenkins, a second-year man out of Bucknell, opens at halfback. Of course, Billy Sims was lost seven weeks ago. To tell you what he means of this team, he's still their leading rusher with 687 yards. Billy Sims gone with an knee injury. First down and 10, Detroit. Thompson in motion. Jenkins. And Jenkins rattles for about five up close to the 20-yard line where it'll bring up a second down and six situation. Brad Van Pelt defensively there who works behind this three-man set, but it changes so often you can't really call it a 3-4. They work Greg Townsend in there, Sean Jones, Squirey, Pickell, and there, of course, the Herald of Secondary, perhaps the best in the football game today. And there is Monty Clark, the leaguer. Was given a new five-year contract after 1982, but if you read the papers up here, you think that Monty is in deep trouble. Owner Bill Ford is non-committal on that at the moment. Second down and six, and Danielson is back. Danielson fires a complete to James Jones, and Jones, the second-year man out of Florida who is having a tremendous year for these Lions, gets the first down up about the 29-yard line, and O.J., Monty Clark was talking about this youngster today at the meeting. Yeah, he reminds you somewhat of James Wilder. He runs the ball real well. He has over 500 yards uh, rushing the ball, but on that reception, that was his 70th 70, 70, uh, reception of the year, and uh, that's pretty good production from a second-year man. They got him last year in the first round, and they took him from Florida primarily because he was a really good receiver as well as a runner. We're talking about James Jones, number 30 for the Lions. Jones got the first down with the 29-yard line. There's a bobble. Danielson pulling away from the center. He indicates that the Lions did, however, get it back. I think he was also pointing out to the other that they were the ones that were offside. There's a flag down there, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Bob Frederick is our referee tonight here in the Silver Dome in Pontiac. We're outside. The temperature is fairly warm, rather a foggy evening. Here's Bob Frederick. Talk to us, Bob. I see. That way to go. And Raiders indicated offside. I spoke of this man a moment ago. What a remarkable athlete. Went down with that knee injury seven weeks ago. Had an extensive surgery, but everyone feels that he will come back and come back strong. A real team player, a real cheerleader. And one thing Marty, Marty Clark did say to us, that this team has not quit. He can't figure it out. 
It's the same team that a year ago won the Central Division of the NFC, and yet here they are, 4-9-1. and one. They lost four games, I think, Frank, less than four points, so they played somehow pretty close, and they've been blown out sometimes, too. Following the penalty, it's first down and five. The ball near the 34-yard line of Detroit. Mark Nichols in motion. Danielson. Jones. Jones will get another first down and much more. Down the sidelines. Rumbles the big man. Wow. Before he's taken out of bounds by Van McElroy. No flags. And Jones with a little flare out in the flat shows you his running a talent as well as his receiving talent. Looks like they got Brad, Brad, Brad Van Pelt in kind of an awkward position. It's just a little flare pass as Frank described. There's Van Pelt right there. Couldn't adjust to come back in. Looks like Rod Martin missed him also. That was Jeff Barnes instead. Good little move. Jones to the 40-yard line of the Raiders. It'll be first down and 10. Again, I'll reiterate for the Raiders, they want to win tonight, beat Pittsburgh next week, and hope that Denver can upset Seattle next Saturday. And in that case, that scenario, they would have the first wild card game at home in Los Angeles. Uh, Jenkins, and he is in deep trouble. He gets in trouble with the strong safety, Mike Davis. One of those perfect examples of having an absolute correct defense call because you saw Davis coming across following a man in motion, and they made that pitch. Davis never slowed down. Nobody blocked him. He went back in the backfield by the time the receiver got outside. I touched on that defensive backfield. As we look at Tom Flores, he has not had the problem, say, the Jets have, San Diego. The most is in tire starting secondary, Haynes, McKinney, Hayes, Davis, they've started every game. That that really in itself is remarkable because they play physical football. He's been lucky, though. He's lost a couple of key guys on his offensive line, but they had so much depth on that offensive line that you hadn't noticed it. Second down and 15. Danielson back. Pressure. Right. Down goes Danielson. Lyle Alzado, a 14-year veteran and really a bit of a the heart and soul of this team. He sort of epitomizes what the Raiders are all about. He was working on Don Lasseter, I believe, right in front of him. He gave him a shot right off the line of scrimmage, sent him back. Lyle made a quick move to the inside. There was no one there to pick him up. Well, this is a young Lion team, and Don Lasseter is only in his second year. There was a few years back when uh, an offensive lineman wouldn't even be starting in his second year, but I think he's going to get an education <laughs> he got here tonight. One there. <laughs> he got one there. Don Lasseter, of course, replaced an injured Rich Stringer early in the season. The Detroit Lions also lost their starting center, Steve Mott, in the fourth game of the season. So they have a bit of a makeshift line they've been going with this year. Third down and a whole bunch for Danielson. He slides underneath the Jenkins. And Jenkins back to the original line of scrimmage. Up into there by James Davis. Looks like a holding penalty back at the line the of scrimmage. is down right at the line of scrimmage. And we could get that holding call that is so familiar, too familiar. I would take that penalty, put him on back some more. I guess it's pretty typical of the Lions. They're one of the more penalized teams in the NFL this year. It's interesting that they've been able to move the ball. They're rated fifth offensively, but they haven't been able really to get the ball in the end zone. One of Steve Hurts, our statistician's little numbers, is calls those the yards you gain and points you have out of them. They've only averaged like 5.5 yards per hundred, I mean points per hundred yards. So, uh, and that is pretty low. Offensive holding, number 67, and we will repeat the third down. Yes. So the Raiders do take the penalty. They would have had a fourth down and 10, but Ed Murray is kicking very well for Detroit, and he would have been within range there. We want to get quickly something in on this December the 9th. Baseball news, big news for Mets fans particularly. Kind of a surprising trade. Gary Carter is going to come to the New York Mets from Montreal. How about that? We'll tell you about the entire trade a little later on. For the Lions, third down and 32. They're back at their own 38-yard line. Four wide receivers are in. Danielson has a lot of time, but there's a lot of coverage downfield. And Danielson looks upfield, cannot find a receiver. Uh -huh. The booze will be on the lips of this crowd, and it'll, they'll come very early tonight. <laughs> That was an expression from a fan right there. He said, you know what, give me a break, will you? And it is tough on the fans because they've been out here, they really expected a good team this year. A lot of preseason picks had the Lions favored to win their division. They've not really come through. And as Frank mentioned earlier, OJ, they've had a lot of the same guys back that they, they had when they, when they won the division. This is Mike Black on fourth down. Clee Montgomery, who has replaced Greg Pruitt a couple of weeks ago, 
Greg having trouble holding on to the ball. Had nine fumbles in his 50 attempts. So they have Cree Montgomery back there now for the Raiders. And he takes it at the 17. And Montgomery, good running out of the 25 to about the 27. Hit there by William Frizzell. 40-yard effort by Mike Black. And the Raiders get the football back. We have no score from Detroit. We'll be back in a moment. Meredith and uh, what's his name, the former record holder yeah. for the <laughs> rushing in a single season, O.J. Simpson. He used to be O.J. Simpson. I tell you, you know, I was talking to Eric last week, and I said it'd be good if you can get about 180 yards so you won't have so much pressure on you going into the 49er game. <laughs> I didn't expect him to get it all against Houston. <laughs> we'll be talking more about that, of course, a little later on. Meanwhile, the Raiders have a first down and 10. The ball at their own 27-yard line, 11-29, remaining in the first quarter. No score from Pontiac, Michigan. there by Bruce McNorton, but a flag is down. We should get some kind of interference call downfield. Strange looking situation because everybody was he had plenty of time. Detroit. Take a look at the offensive unit while they sort the penalty out. Mark Wilson making his ninth start, taking over from an injured Jim Plunkett in the first Seattle game for the Raiders. Been effective. He sprained a thumb a few weeks ago against Chicago, and that has hindered him. We watched him work out as we look at the remainder of the offensive unit of the Raiders in the pregame warm-up, and he was really firing the football. On the first down and 10, following the penalty, this is Marcus Allen, his first carry of the night, and he is piled up by a hustling Detroit defense. The penalty, by the way, was against Gary Cobb of Detroit for holding. And let's take a look at the defensive unit. They go with the four-man front. Over on the right side, they're exceptionally strong with William Gay and Doug English, both pro bowlers from a year ago. Ken Fantetti in the middle. Well, the Raiders have a little problem here. I see Dave Dalby is down. And a secondary that has the fewest interceptions in the NFL. Dave Dalby is down, and this is a man who started his 800, 188 consecutive game tonight, and they, they really feel he is important in the middle of that line. I asked Tom Flores to tell me about leaders, and he spoke very highly of this man, the center, Dave Dalby. We'll be back. The Lions have not allowed a touchdown in their last two appearances on Monday Night Football. That's a trade we told you about, and it is kind of stunning. Uh, Gary Carter, seven times an all-star, tied for the league lead in RBIs with 106 last year. And, of course, for the Mets, they'll lose starter Hubie Brooks. And Gary Carter will be coming to the Mets in New York. That just announced this evening. Inside the 34-yard line, second down and eight. The Raiders still in possession. No score from Pontiac, Michigan. Wilson, again trying to get to Cliff Branch. And I wonder if they are thinking perhaps a little bit about the fact that Cliff Branch needs one reception for his, his 500th career reception. It's plus been the, a remarkable career. It has been, and plus the fact he hasn't caught a pass in the last three games. Uh, one of the reasons why is that the word is Mark Wilson does not like to throw to his uh, left. He doesn't throw many passes to the left side of the field. He likes to throw to the right side of the field. And it's interesting that here in the first quarter, his third, first two passes are gone to the left side of the field. Third down and eight. Mark Wilson looks over an odd man set up. Christensen. He did have linebackers in front of him, and Mark Wilson, under pressure, had to throw over them. The ball was high, incomplete. We'll see the punting unit. Todd Christensen, once again, is having a very productive year. He always seems to come up with those catches when you need them. He's had, a, I think, he's averaged like at least three catches a game this year. Whereas Mark Wilson, another average that he has, we got to look for. He's thrown an interception every game he's started, at least one, and that's one of the things you want to try to avoid. There's Robbie Martin dropping for Detroit, and here is Ray Guy. Not averaging all that high, but he is a great plus and has been since he was a first-round draft pick back in 1973. They got them a punter for a decade plus when they went for a first round for Ray Guy. Boy, he puts up a tall one. Robbie Martin. 
hesitated for a moment, but only a moment, as he realized that the height on that ball, he would have to go with the fair catch, and he does at the 28-yard line. Only 38-yard punt, and Detroit will start at their 28. There's not a whole lot you can find that has been good for Detroit this year. The four teams they beat were all under 500. They beat Green Bay in a tough on Thanksgiving Day. They beat Atlanta, Tampa Bay, and Minnesota. It's been a struggling year. Detroit with the football, first down and 10 near their own 28-yard line. Danielson gets good protection. Gets it to Jones out of the backfield, but he doesn't hold on. Jones being covered back there by the strong safety Mike Davis. Also getting back there is Brad Van Pelt now in his 12th year, and of course, 11 of those with the Giants. Five of them were Pro Bowl years. He still is active. As you can see, Jones almost he almost caught the ball. He's trying to work on Brad Van Pelt. The book on Brad is he's slowed up a little bit in his latter years, even though he plays the run good. Normally on running downs, they'll bring in Jeff Barnes. As you can see, he appeared as if he had the ball, but I guess they said he never had total uh, possession of it, but it, it appears they're, they're picking on Van Brad. Brad Van, Van, Van Pelt. Pelt. Oh, get that out. Yeah, uh, hard. On first down before they can get Jeff Barnes in the game. Second down and 10. Still no score. 10-20 remaining in the first quarter. Motion man is Reese McCall. Danielson. Jones. And Jones just pulls into Brad Van Pelt. Picks up about six out of that. And it'll bring up a third down and about four. Very frustrating. Frustrated. Third down. Matt Millen that last time. Van Belt seems to be injured a little bit. You see on the sideline. But Millen was trying to go out and cover that little swing pass. And he just fell down getting out there. Nobody touched him. Brad Van Pelt you saw going over to the sideline. And his replacement coming into the game. And Jeff Barnes. From the shotgun on the third and four. Raiders have been extremely tough against the run over the past few weeks. And they have run very well, and that's Lyle Alzado once again. Oh, Lyle. Lyle Alzado has got him a chop, chop licker over on that side, Don Laster. He is teeing off on Don Laster. Unfortunately for Don Laster, the last time it was a passing situation, he got some help, but the man went over to try to uh, help against Howie Long, and as you can see, Lyle just beat him, pushed him back, beat him to the inside, and got another sack. That's two for Lyle tonight. That'll bring up fourth down, and Mike Black comes on once again. Lee Montgomery settles back near the 30-yard line for the Raiders. Montgomery was the key punt return man in 1980 and 81. 82 and 83, and through most of this year, it was Greg Crook. Black had to hurry that, but he gets off a boomer that'll take Montgomery to the 21-yard line. And good hustling. And the part of the Detroit Lions, number 58, down there very quickly and making the stop in good shape. That was Doig, Steve Doig. So the Raiders will have a first and 10. The ball will be at their 23-yard line when we come back. High up at the pressurized top of the Silver Dome here in Pontiac, Michigan, there is a Christmas tree oh, exhibited oh, oh. as the season's... Greetings are being expressed from the site of Super Bowl 16 a few years ago. The subtle reminder, we'll be bringing you Super Bowl 19, January the 20th from Palo Alto, California. First and 10 Raiders. Marcus Allen and Allen. Moves the football and there's a scramble for it. Gets it back. It's Allen's eighth fumble thus far this year. Like all good running backs who try to squeeze out that extra yard, they're going to give it up a little bit. And Marcus, you ever that, talk to Marcus about that very thing, O.J.? Well, last year I noticed something he was doing. You know, he has those big forearms, and those are his only weapons offensively. So every time he was about to become to get tackled, he'd attack the guy with his forearm, and the ball would slip out underneath the elbow. So I told him he should lock his elbow every time he was about to make contact. Second down and four. The two tight ends are in, and Marcus Allen does his 707 over the top. Coming up short of the first down, and here's Lyle Alzado, and he just can't wait to get back in there and get reacquainted with Laster. He's having a good night tonight. Lyle has been the one that, actually, he's not the, anywhere close to the team leader in sacks, but I think his presence there through the years, Lyle's been the kind of guy that he always makes a little, just enough noise on the other side of the line that they know he's there, don't they? 
seek and destroy. One of the phrases that you had connect with the Raiders, commitment to excellence, yes, pride and poise, just to win. Well, they have won. 23-3 and one on Monday Night Football, the Raiders. Third down and one. That time, Marcus Allen stayed on his feet, did not have to get airborne, and he gets the first down at the 35-yard line. We've got some couple of games coming your way. Friday night, we're going to be in San Francisco, and so much is on the line there for the Los Angeles Rams when they go against the 49ers. All kinds of ramifications from that one as it affects the NFC deadlock in the East. And, of course, teams affected, Giants, the Cards, the Cowboys. I'll tell you more about that, and we'll have our look at Eric Dickerson on Friday night. Dallas and Miami next Monday. We've got a couple of good ones. First down and 10, Wilson. Slips it in to Dave Casper, and Casper is short of the first down, but he'll get about seven out of that, moving out close to the 43 in the arms of Ken Fantetti. You said something well ago, Jay, that I didn't know anything about. I'm, I'm watching now. If he throws to the right or if he throws to the left, uh, that's that's kind of an inside scoop you've well, got. Well, I know it's a book on him. Uh, he likes to throw to the right and down the middle. I think he may have, you know, when he came out, threw intentionally to the left just to, in case they have that book on him to make him make them not overplaying to the right side of the defense second and long to Frank Hawkins good short yardage man he's up there close to a first down out over the 45 yard line tough little runner they got him in 81 in the 10th round draft pick he had a remarkable career at the University of Nevada at Reno short however and I think that probably is why they got him so late in the draft Frank Hawkins He's about 5'9". And we're going to have the measurement. Again, while they bring the sticks out, I'll remind you for the Raiders, they want this badly tonight because next week they play Pittsburgh. If they win tonight, beat Pittsburgh. And if Denver beats Seattle on Saturday of this week, then the Raiders will host the first wild card game in Los Angeles. And should Seattle beat Denver? Well, the Raiders are going to have to travel to play in Denver on the weekend prior to Christmas, and it could be a little frosty there. And a lot of people wonder which Raider team would show up here. I think the Raiders would like to start playing week in and week out championship caliber football. I think the 49ers have been the only team that has cinched the playoff that has continued to play championship caliber football. They played championship caliber football this past week, didn't they? At the 45-yard line, first down, Wilson back. Wilson wide open is Barnwell. Yeah. And a good shot by Mark Wilson. Uh, Don, that was what Mark Wilson could not do when we watched him earlier against Seattle a few weeks ago with that sprained thumb from the Bear game. He really put some smoke on that one. He did. We were watching him also in, in this pregame warm-up, and, boy, he was really zipping it around. Again, another little book on Mark is that, you know, he has not played that much. Jim Plunkett's been the quarterback there for a while, that he throws a different ball when the game starts. But... I think the injury to his thumb had a great deal to do with it. He's thrown actually some very pure, pure good, good passes. No score, 6-35 remaining in the first quarter is Mark Allen. Mark, Marcus Allen almost breaks it off, getting inside the 35. Gain of about five for Marcus Allen. It's interesting also over the last few weeks, the Raiders have been a more potent offensive unit. They've been running the ball a lot better ever since. Dave Casper has come around. If you notice, they're playing mostly too tight in. They have both Christensen and Casper, number 87, in the football game. And since they've gone to that alignment, they've really been running the ball uh, much, much more effectively. Second down and five. Out of the backfield, Marcus Allen. Here comes Frank Hawkins. Didn't like the way things look to the outside. Brings it back inside, gets to the line of scrimmage. That's it. It'll be third and five. Hey, the Raiders are doing what they have in recent years. They, of course, won the Super Bowl after the 80 season as a wild card, I might add, defeating Philadelphia. And then, of course, they won last year, but in each year they've been successful. They have always come into the end of the season with momentum. Uh, for instance, the Raiders, the first 11 weeks of the season were rushing for a little over 100 yards. In the last three games, they've been averaging 190 yards rushing. So they know when the playoffs are about to begin. Third and five. Wilson was battered and buffeted. Had to wait for a receiver. He was looking for a cliff branch. No. And the Raiders get it back. 
as we said on previous broadcasts, the Raiders are a team that they will not throw the ball until after the receiver has made his cut. Now, most teams, the quarterback would have already thrown the ball. He saw what Cliff Branch was doing. Cliff was running an out pattern. Most teams would have anticipated and thrown the ball. Now, meanwhile, Cliff was uh, wide open, but he held on to the ball, and that was a victim of their, their style of uh, They offense. also got themselves out of field goal range. And so we are going to watch Ray Guy. They would have had a shot with Chris Barr at three points. Good timely pressure by Detroit. Alvin Hall is back with Robbie Martin. Hall 35, Robbie Martin 83. Guy, very good getting it out of bounds inside the 20. Leads the league, as a matter of fact. Oh, no, and he did, a, he did it there. And look, great guy just applauded his own punt. Ah, he has been amazing. 23 of 77. Uh, they did not catch it, however. There's guy thought he had it. I did too. I thought he had it, but he doesn't. But he has led the league in that department. He is an effective weapon. We'll be back. Were you the starting quarterback? I certainly was. My gosh, look at that. 1956. I was a child prodigy. I was only 12. Started that game. Still no score. 4.43 remaining in the first quarter. Detroit and the Raiders. Detroit first down and 10. The ball at the 20-yard line. Single setback is Ken Jenkins. This is Jenkins. And Jenkins gets a five out to the 25-yard line. Chased out of bounds there. Pressure coming from Squarey and Rod Martin. Rod Martin, one of the really fine defensive linebackers. And Squarey there filling in for an injured Bob Nelson. What we would call a successful first down anytime you can get five yards on first down. This offensive unit, especially the offensive line, has done a good job this year. Of course, Monty Clark was an offensive line coach. You may have noticed earlier that Benny, B Billy Sims averaged five and a half yards a run when he was uh, uh, earlier in the season, and uh, Ken Jenkins is averaging right at five yards a carry right now. It's Second good. down and five. Jones in motion for Detroit. The handoff, however, Jenkins. And Jenkins held for a couple to bring up a third down and three. Matt Millen back in the lineup. And Matt Millen, of course, struggled through the middle of the season with a groin pull. And he is the strength of the Raider defense. The linebacking core against the run. Millen, however, healthy and was a, quite a potent force in that game a week ago that the Raiders took from Miami 45-34. We're looking at number 31, old little Ken Jenkins. He's only 5'8", 185 pounds. You gotta admire his courage, if nothing else. Third down and three. From the shotgun. Danielson gets away from Howie Long. It's the first down yardage to Jones, and he breaks it off. Jones with... A good exhibition of running inside the 45-yard line of the Raiders. First down, Detroit. Nice. And Monty Clark was exactly right. The youngster can run. He's a good blocker and a good receiver. And most importantly, is a heads-up ball play. He saw his quarterback was in trouble. He scrambled. He's 6'2", 229 pounds, and he moves it pretty good. Last uh, earlier this year. Hey, that's a, quite a move for that big a man, that little spin, trying to get out of the arms of the tackler. Van McElroy did do a good job in bringing him down. Once again, Van Pelt was just a little bit slow in closing that gap. Gave him a chance to turn it upfield. All the high hopes for Detroit really hinged on the fact that it was going to be Billy Sims teaming with James Jones this year. Such, however, is not the case. On first and ten, Danielson, oh. under pressure, tries to get the ball to Leonard Thompson and Perhaps the best defensive back in football, Mike Haynes, was right there. Well, Danielson got smart on that play. He was throwing a little hitch pass. That's when the receiver goes about three yards and just stops. And when he looked up, he saw Mike Haynes had already come out of his back paddle, and he just threw the ball away. Mike Haynes was seeing deja vu from a week ago with that 97-yard touchdown return off Dan Marino in Miami. Boy, I'll tell you, when they got him a year ago, well, last November, Mike Haynes teaming with Lester Hayes on the corner. What an awesome pair. Second down and 10. The two setbacks are in. Dave Daddio, a rookie from Maryland, number 44, is in there as a setback. Oh, yeah, oh, boy, they all came that time. Yep. Getting there first was number 93, Greg Townsend. We talked.
talked about him a little earlier and also Howie Long. If Townsend would have missed, Howie Long was there right on schedule. Well, they made a good, quick, clean break at the line of scrimmage, didn't they? They were back there. That's their version of Fred Dean, Greg Townsend, number 93. He's the Raiders' uh, Fred Dean. Does a good job coming out of there. He has seven sacks coming into the night, and that's eight for a guy playing off the bench. That's pretty good. Not that's bad. 57 sacks for the season thus far for the Raiders. They have three tonight. They came into the night with 54. Uh -huh. To give you an idea how that compares to Detroit, Detroit came into the night with 33. Third down and long. And there was movement at the line of scrimmage. I did not see contact, but it could be the Lions used too much time. Ball start, number 72 offense. The 32nd clock had ticked down, but it was Chris Dietrich, the left guard, who drew one of the Raiders off. This first quarter could be an indication about what Monty Clark was saying this morning has happened to him. They had good field position. First down to go on the 39-yard line of, of the Raiders, and now they're third down back on the, their own 41. They just can't seem to sustain something. And it's the second time it's happened here in the first quarter. They were deep in Raider territory. A couple of sacks, a penalty, and they had the punt. And they are facing that now as they look over a third down and 25. And when you turn loose, wow. the Raiders, they know you have to throw. Alzado was there. Howie Long was there. And Bill Pickell was there, number 71. Any one of the three of them would have nailed Gary Danielson. Fourth sack of the night. And they are, <laughs> if this <laughs> continues, they are going to assault the all-time record for sacks. When do you think, or do you think, O.J., that we might see Jim Plunkett, who hasn't played for a while? He, try to get him ready for these playoffs. Well, there's a lot of people that feel they will not make it through the playoffs playing on the road, which they might have to without Jim Plunkett. So I think they may get the rust off him if they can get a lead here tonight. That's Mike Black punting, and this is Clee Montgomery at the 20-yard line. Got a few blockers in front, and Cleese spins inside out to the 29-yard line, where it'll be first down Raiders. Still no score, as the 4, 9, and 1 Detroit Lions are staying with the Raiders. The Raiders, of course, 10 and 4. And again, they feel they really must win. Talk about a cat having nine lives. Plunkett has got considerably more. He opened the first six games for the Raiders. They didn't play that well, but they won five of them. He went out in the sixth game of the season with a torn abdominal muscle. He is ready to go, however, and as we've just discussed, we could see a little bit of Plunkett tonight, or maybe a lot of Plunkett tonight. Now yeah, he played a few games in Stanford Stadium. We'd love to get back there. First down and 10. Wilson is back to the Raiders. Todd Christensen wide open. Christensen held short of the first down as he moves to the 37-yard line in the arms of Gary Cobb. Former running back, second-round draft pick of the Cowboys a few years ago. They had him on IR for a year, and then Christensen, of course, went to the Giants. They tried him out as a running back, turned him loose, went to the Raiders, didn't catch a pass the first time, first year he was there. Moved him to tight end. Last year, he led the entire National Football League with 92 receptions. He came into the night with 71. Second and one. That's Dave Casper in motion. As we look at Marcus Allen, he gets the first down easily out over the 40 to the 42. He does everything so gracefully, OJ. And it certainly helps when there's no penetration. Earlier in the year, they the Raiders had a lot of problems running the football. They were giving up a, you know, they were moving linemen in and out, and they were not give, giving him that solid front wall that he liked. The good back like Marcus running from the eye formation. He likes to pick his holes, and the only way you can do that is to not get any penetration by the defense, and they're doing a good job of not allowing that penetration now. Less than a minute remaining in the first quarter. First down and 10, Mark Wilson. Looks off Cliff Branch, goes back to Christensen, who works like a running back there. That is the that nice experience move. of the yeah. running back. A good move by Christensen to get the first down near the 47-yard line of Detroit. Dipsy Doodles. He gave us a little Tony Dorsett spin uh -huh. there at the uh -huh. end. Hey. Uh, there's one thing that uh, Mark Wilson is doing tonight. He's finding his secondary receiver. That's uh, been a wrap on him the last uh, few weeks. See, Mark does a good job catching the ball, and that's a real nice little spin. You see Tony Dorsett 
Uh, he don't do that quite often. Todd Christensen had Gary Cobb doing a two-step with him, and he gets the first down at the 47-yard line of Detroit. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll be right back. We hope you're enjoying the early start. A first for Monday Night Football at 8 o'clock Eastern start. As we begin the second quarter, the Raiders have the ball. First down and 10 at the 47-yard line of Detroit. And this is Kenny King. And the surge of the Detroit defense stops Kenny King right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Take a look at the numbers from a long first quarter. Fairly even, and there is no score. Time of possession, fairly even. Detroit, again, 4-9-1 and one, out of it. Only pride and self-respect is what they're involved with tonight. They've got some good players. We've talked about it before, but William Gay, Doug English, Curtis Green, Colfer, that's that front four up there. Cobb, Fantani. Williams, there's some good linebackers. These guys can play defense. Second down and 10. Marcus Allen goes out to the right. Ooh, and a quick move by William Gay. Flags are down. That was big number 79. I don't know if he was drawn off or not. He was in a sprinter's stance, and he really took off. Bob Frederick, once again, our referee. Ball starts, 79 on the offense. That was Bruce Davis making a quick move. William Gay lined up way outside of him, and I think Bruce Davis tried to anticipate the snap number to make sure he could get blocking position on Gay. The pro bowler, as I mentioned earlier, last year with 13 and a half sacks. Doug English, look at him right to the side. Yeah. Those two guys are about as good as they, as they get. Doug okay. English, a pro bowler a year ago also. William Gay had such a jump off the ball. He has 10 sacks this year. I'm, I think uh, Mark Wilson is lucky that Bruce Davis jumped to block him. I think he didn't hit him before the ball was snapped. Second down, 15. Wilson is back. There's a lot of time. And Wilson is really hammered. Graham was there, the strong safety, along with Coker, who came in from behind. And I'll tell you, when you're 6'6 six, six and 205, that's not a, a lot of meat on a very long frame. And he's dealing with some pretty big cats out there. Michael Coper, we were talking about him, too, on the other left defensive left end. Not quite as big as some of them, but terribly quick. You saw a good, uh, good example of that right there. End of the ball game for the Raiders. An exciting football player, Doki Williams, number 85. Didn't play all that much at UCLA, but he was effective when he was there. He wears number 85. We're going to cover from the end zone on the third down and long passing situation. Here comes the linebacker. Wilson in deep trouble. Down he goes. The blitz was on. English was in there. But the pressure of the linebackers made the difference. Coming was Gary Cobb also, and the loss is back to the 47, and I'll tell you something. Detroit playing the Raiders tough tonight. If I understand this stat that was just handed to me, it's the last 12 games the Lions have not held anyone scoreless in the first quarter. So this is a good show for them starting this thing off. Great guy to punt, and Robbie Martin has dropped to the Raiders, or Detroit's 15-yard line. Great guy is also a backup quarterback. If you don't rush him, he'll stand there and hold it and let his coverage get downfield. And Guy kicks it through the end zone. One of the few touchbacks you'll see Ray Guy get. But he had 53 yards out of that. And we'll be back in the Silverdome. Detroit with possession at their 20-yard line. And Monty Clark, interestingly enough, he grew up a few miles away from Tom Flores in the San Joaquin Valley. <laughs> Monty Clark ah, growing up in Kingsburg, I think it was, and Flores growing up in Sanger, played against each other in high school. First down and 10. Right. Detroit with the football. Danielson under pressure. Oh. And Howie Long just reaches one of those big ham arms over to get Danielson. There's a loss on the play. We asked Monty a little earlier today, in this kind of a situation, how do you motivate a team? 
Well, at this point, uh, you know, we don't have a chance for some of the things that we'd hoped for this year. Last year, we had the best season in 26 years here, and we hope to anxious to come back this year and go on from there. All that is out the window at this stage, and now it's just a matter of personal pride and, uh, and being a professional and the obligation to yourself, uh, self-satisfaction of knowing you've done your best, and that's really all that's left now. All the things you must say when you're a head coach with a four, nine, and one record. But it's Monty also true. You know, I mean, it is true. Yeah, it is true. What else are they going to do? On second down and long yardage, Jones over the left side. And the Raiders now have five sacks on the night. They need one more to tie the Bears for the league lead in that department. If you are concerned about the NFL record for sacks in a game, it is 12. I was. I was concerned about and that. And if you're concerned about sacks for a season, I was. 67 yeah. what, by what, the Raiders. What year, please? In 1967. Thank you. Yeah. I'm not as concerned about that as I was. Third down and 10. <laughs> yeah. Ball resting right at the 20 yard line. From the shotgun, Danielson. Rod Martin at three wheeling. He gets the ball, however, to Chadwick. And Jeff Chadwick has an open field. Covers up the football and inside the 35 yard line. <laughs> a young free agent a year ago out of Grand Valley State gets the big play for the Lions and they turn a long third down situation into a first down inside the 35 yard line of the Raiders. Didn't he have a great game? He sure did. We were here. Chadwick is a heck of a player there, OJ. But see, he does a good job of covering the ball. He, he, I guess he realizes he's not the fastest receiver in the league and watching him here. He knows he's about to get caught. Boom. The last thing he wants to do is cover up the ball. It's interesting to see Gary Danielson throw the ball to Chadwick. They both attended the same high school, even though it wasn't at the same time, Divine Child High School. First down and 10. Chadwick, a 47-yard pickup. That's the longest reception of his young career. Very time for Howie, 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 Howie Long. Reigns all uh -huh. over young Ken Jenkins. He, as O.J. pointed out earlier, Jenkins is only 5'8", 185, and Howie Long is 6'5", 265. The flag is down. Clark was saying what respect he has for Howie Long, and he says it's just you know, there's nobody better than he is at that position, in his opinion. Yeah, you just gave a kind of a stimulating question there. Exact same dimensions. Offside, number 75 defense, and yeah, first down be will why, be replayed. See, he was why quick. Howie Long was so quick, but I asked Monty in our meeting, does it? If you had a choice to take Mark Astineau, who's also 6'5 and 265, or Howie Long. <laughs> Monty was puzzled for a minute, and then he became a politician. Yeah. So they'd like to have them both. Well, the word in L.A. is how he just signed a new contract. He's making 75000 more than Mark Gastineau. 875000 a year. All right. First down and five following the penalty. Oh, man. Getting a hand on it with Brad Van Pelt, who had nothing but AstroTurf in front of him. Van Pelt is not the, what you call the prototype of a linebacker because he's 6'5". He looks actually looks taller than that to me. He's a long, gangly kind of guy, but he's been around for a while. Look at those stats, five times in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, he came up as a safety, Don, 12 years ago with the Giants. Well, we've talked about him so many times in the past, but great athlete, great baseball player to do all of it. Five times a Pro Bowler. Brad Van Pelt, Michigan State product. They have two players that were from the Michigan schools here. He's one of them. Second down and five. Detroit. Still no score in the game. Early minutes of the second quarter. Danison had to hurry that one. He was caught by Jenkins uh -oh. somehow. Lester hurt himself there. Man. Got his arm. Lester Hayes is up there. Looked as if he caught his arm in between. Lester, that's... Uh, he hit it right on the elbow. He may have just hit that little crazy bone in his... Uh, Arthur Hayes, the pro bowling defensive left cornerback, one of the fine ones ever to play this game. Let's take a look at it again. Sort of a gutsy throw. You see he was under a lot of pressure. Actually, Lester Hayes was covering Robbie Martin, and at the last minute, Martin, you'll see 83 runs by him, and there's Lester. Jenkins was on top of him before he even realized it and just hit, it, hit him with his elbow, and it appeared as if he may have uh, well, injured that elbow. You hope it's one of those tinglers that they are much concerned over the, the health and well-being of Lester Hayes. They're attending him now. We'll be back in a moment. Lester Hayes looked a lot better than when we left him, and it could be one of those tinglers. Don and O.J. and I have all experienced that a little bit. You bang that elbow, and the electricity goes right to the top of your head. Hopefully that's what it is. He's out. Ted Watts is in. And 
and Detroit is confronted with a third down and short yardage situation. Sixth play of this drive, and Detroit's deepest penetration. Jones, close to the first down. There is Lester. Well, I thought it was the one interception for Lester this year. That doesn't necessarily mean anything other than maybe they avoid him a great deal. Four straight Pro Bowls, however. And short of the first down is James Jones for Detroit. And it'll be fourth down. You're four, nine, and one. I don't think there's any other consideration. You might be in a four-down situation from the opening kickoff if you're four, nine, and one. He was in the opening four-down situation from the team kneel on. That's right. Now, but this is good practice for the Raiders, too. They'll see many of these situations in the playoffs. It's hard to go wide on the Raiders. Uh -huh. Taking it outside, they're going to put their heads down, shoot the gaps. He penetrated. Mike Davis finally made the stop, but Jones was in trouble from the moment he got the ball. If you're going to do that, take him straight up. Look for a trap block. Yeah. Well, one thing for sure, the Raiders' short yardage defense is in goal, not in playoff form, as you can see. The only thing they're trying to do, those front guys, Howie. is penetrate. You see Howie penetrates. You and see Bell. Patel penetrate. That's Davis. And here comes the cornerback. The fourth down attempt fails. The Raiders take over first and 10, their own 26-yard line, 9.45 remaining in the first half. Surprisingly, no score. Surprisingly, when you consider the Raiders, 45-34 over Miami a week ago. Well, Al, plays. Al Davis said the Raiders are like Rocky Marciano. Marcus Allen pecked and looked and was held for a gain of about a so the United States the gold medals from the downhill the Sarajevo a year ago will be there. 5 o'clock Eastern, Wide World of Sports, this Saturday. Second down and nine. Mark Wilson is back. It's for Christensen. And the flag is down. They're going to bring this one back. So Bruce McNorton of the Lions has the ball. He apparently stepped on Christensen's heel. Down with Christensen, the flag came out immediately as McNorton brings it back for Detroit to the 30-yard line. To me, McNorton appeared to be upfield of Christensen, and Christensen ran into him, but it'll be interesting to see. Why did Al Davis say they're like Rocky Marciano? Well, he say they keep it close, they pound you, and before you know it, they knock you out. <laughs> Defense is pass here to number 29. First down. And that call works against Bruce McNorton. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. I think you'll see it rather well. McNorton was upfield, as you can see, number 29 is upfield. Well, from that angle, it, you couldn't tell if he hit him in the back or if Christensen ran into him. Oh, well, those are tough calls. He was looking the ball in all the way. McNorton, I guess the only way you could call this, saying that he impeded the progress. Ooh, he yeah, might have pulled did. his left arm a little, too. Yep, yeah, he did. I tell you, they, they catch more than you realize. If they ever get around to that replay, it's going to be very interesting. First down, Raiders. Wilson wide open is Barnwell, and he makes a beautiful catch and also saved a rather violent collision with a little hook slide under William Graham. And for Barnwell, a slight 5'11 and 180. That was a tremendous play. I mean, he could have really been hammered on this. He did a good job of going down, and if he would have slid under him, we saw Marcus Allen do it early in the year. He may have been able to get up and score. Now, let's see. As he goes down, he may have tried to steal this move from Marcus. Slide under the defender, but he touched him. Wow, what concentration, though. He knew he was going to be hit. He was into his slide before the ball got there. He gets the first down at the 15-yard line. I would say Rocky has got deepest a deepest penetration. <laughs> left, left jab there. Yeah. Rocky's throwing some right-hand leads right now. Marcus Allen slides inside. Moves for perhaps four to the near the 11 yard line and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our friends all around the country to let you know who's bringing you this telecast for sarasota bradenton wxlt tv channel 40. frank gifford don meredith oj simpson we're in the second quarter of the meeting between the raiders and detroit in case you were thinking nine o'clock tonight with an 8 o'clock start. Yeah, we fooled you. Fooled you. <laughs> so we would also be curious to the response for this first ever time for Monday Night Football. Yeah. Allen got three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Marcus uh, Allen out of the backfield. Todd Christensen, however, all alone. 
And was he ever alone? Christensen getting in for the touchdown. That's his 13th. And that's what Al Davis was talking about when he said they were like Rocky Marciano, as you can see. I can Tom see Christensen somebody was all by himself. <laughs> somebody missed the coverage. Uh, didn't they? <laughs> Yeah, Todd. Well, he's, he is something, isn't he? He works so well off that line of scrimmage. They throw so many guys at you. A few moments ago, Marcus Allen just retook the AFC rushing lead. He now has a 1,102 yards, taking that over from San Diego's Ernest Jackson as Chris Barr splits the uprights, and we have the first score of the game. The Raiders on top 7-0 with 7-18 remaining in the first half. And it was a likely receiver, Todd Christensen. Christensen on the sidelines with the touchdown for the Raiders from 12 yards out. Mark Wilson, good move off the line of scrimmage for Todd, who's trying to get a message across. He was talking, he said, I should have your job, O.J. <laughs> I thought he said Don. I know, I think he said O.J. <laughs> Chris Barr to kick off. Manley, the rookie from Northern Arizona, number 82, is deep along with Alvin Hall, number 35. He said Frank. And it bounces out of the arm but he comes back and retrieves it. Here he is, Alvin Hall, and in a lot of trouble. Wrong way, Alvin. Taken at the 12-yard line. The Raiders cover so well with their special team. They have hustlers. That was Sam Seal down there. Let's take a look at that scoring drive by the Raiders. With a left jab here, a right jab there, left lead, and as O.J. would say, the knockout punch. The 12-yard touchdown pass Todd Christensen. The knockout punch may have been that long yellow one, which was that penalty. First down and 10, Detroit. Hey, how about that? Always be a Cowboy fan, huh? Well, they, that's really good Cowboy fan, because the Cowboys lost a tough one yesterday. First and 10, Detroit. Danielson remains the quarterback. Jones and Jenkins, the setbacks. Blitz is on, and Harry Lau on a deal. Danielson in a lot of trouble. Oh. It was Piquel who got the sack, but it was Howie Long dealing inside. Uh, and it's a little play that they work. The inside man steps outside, and Howie Long comes right behind him. It was a beautiful play. Watch 55. Watch number 55, Matt Millen. Matt Millen went outside. He took on the guard and the tackle. He, uh, he allowed Howie Long to come around untouched. Howie just missed his man, but Piquel was right there. Sixth stack of the night, and the Raiders are now tied with the Bears for the NFL lead for the season with 60. Matt Millen's the linebacker, but at 6'2", 250-something pounds, uh, he can play like a tackle. He can deal with those uh, down linemen. He was a defensive end in his collegiate days at Penn State. Second and 18, and Danielson deep in his own territory. That's James Jones. Works his way to the five-yard line. Let's go back and look at it again. Watch number 55. 55. He's in the middle of your screen, and he's coming outside, and he's taking on the guard and the tackle. Number 75 is Howie Long. Uh, he comes up the middle almost untouched. Lou Jenkins took a shot at him. Meanwhile, Piquel, while Danielson was busy, he gets loose from his block. Sixth sack of the night. Offensive lineman looking around saying, who are those guys? Third down, 16. The ball at the five-yard line. and the Raiders are down there smelling it again. Now, the intended receiver was Jones. <laughs> if you watch Jones, McKinney gets the interception. He starts to run. Unfortunately, Jones, I think, still had his hand on the ball. Now, watch, watch Jones get his hand in there. Hand is in there. He, no, actually, it was number 86 coming around yeah, there. Mike Nichols, Nichols Mark knocks Nichols. the ball out. A great job of running by Van McElroy. He learned this down in Nice Waco. Watch, watch this spin. That. Everybody's been watching Tony Dort set. <laughs> the Raiders have a first down goal to go. They have erupted here about midway in the second quarter. They lead 7 to nothing. 5-31 remaining in the first half. Barnwell split to the left. Marcus 
Chris Allen. Hit at the five, and his surge will carry him to the four. It'll be second down goal to go. Was that Ben Teddy? Or how do you say his name? Ben Ben Teddy. Yeah. Ben Ken Teddy. Ben Teddy. Now, you look at their linebackers. All those guys in the you know, last year in there, they had a really had a good year. Well, you, I know what you're saying, but you'll see yeah. one of the reasons you tell your backs to try to stay on the ground. Right. You're sort of vulnerable once you get up in the air and uh, you'll take shots like this. But I think Rocky Marciano is throwing nothing but right hand lead. He might be. That was Alvin Hall, as a matter of fact, instead of uh, that. Second down goal to go. Marcus Allen once again. Mark Allen tries to slide in. He is held just inside the one-yard line. It'll be third down, goal to go, and now they are checking the right foot of quarterback Gary Danielson on the sideline. He's got that big toe right at the ball of that big toe. Uh, they all, Often you call it astro toe. It's a stiffness that you get if you ever stub your toe on this surface, and it's quite common with people who play uh, on artificial surfaces. Well, he looks like he's in excruciating pain. Yeah. We could see a new quarterback, and that would be the rookie from Columbia, John Witkowski. Our director, Chet Forty, will be pleased to see. There's a scramble for goal line. Actually, Mark Wilson slipped as he was coming away from the center, and I think they never really got a proper uh, handoff. The Raiders maintain possession, and now they'll have a fourth down goal to go. So let's see, we see Witkowski come in. Well, they'll look at it once again. Take a look at Mark Wilson, number six. Reverse angle here. See, he just got tangled up there, falling out of there, so he never quite made the handoff. Unfortunately, that'll go against Marcus. <laughs> when you get down in there All close yardage like that, you're a running back. You have got everything zeroed in on the hole you're trying to hit, and Wilson just didn't get it to Allen properly. It's fourth down and goal to go. The ball at just inside the one-yard line. Allen tries to go over. No way. Good defensive play, and they look at films. They scout. They know Allen is going to go up high. Sometimes you can't do anything about it, so you can send somebody up there high with him, and that's what the Lions did, and the crowd loves it. They did a super job of penetration there, because normally Marcus will take off of two or three yards in the backfield, but the Lions were able to penetrate and, and get him before he took off. Yeah, we are going to see John Witkowski, a record-setting rookie from Columbia University. He will be coming in. Gary Danielson with a very sore right foot. We'll be back in a moment. Raiders trailing 24-0 late in the second quarter came back to defeat the Chargers 28-24. Don Meredith had a great observation. He said this youngster coming into the game, John Witkowski, had his speech all set to go. And of course the timeout was called. He probably ran out of words, wouldn't you think? The youngster. He's had a short speech. He is three of five as far in his young career. He hands off to Ken Jenkins and he just uh, does avoid a safety as he is hit and hit hard by Brad Van Pelt. And the only other Columbia football player I can think of is George Stark. Of course, Chet Forty was our director, one of the great basketball players there. Our, our leader, Rune Arledge, Columbia graduate, but there are not a lot of them in pro football. They don't have many good basketball players. He was, <laughs> Mikowski was a sixth round pick. Played on a very weak team at Columbia, but he set records for attempts, completions, yardage. He passed just under 8,000 yards for 56 touchdowns. He had 29 touchdowns as a junior and 23 last year. But this is an entirely different game. He probably looked over and said, is that really how he long? Second and 10. Oh, oh, and a oh. man was open. Jenkins was wide open, and Witkowski overthrows. I think he was so wide open that John just couldn't believe it. And that's that extra adrenaline that pumps in yeah. there, and he just zipped it. Incidentally, the good news, at least for the Raiders, Lester Hayes back in the lineup. Bad news for this youngster. Yeah, I think that's a case of him being, being a little pumped up. Yeah, and gotta be. Not throwing that up. Arm can't be sufficiently warm, and uh, misjudging his receiver. 244 remaining in the first half. The Raiders leading seven to nothing. 12-yard touchdown pass. Mark Wilson to Todd Christensen. Shotgun from the end zone. Here they come. Witkowski unloads one and he's right, right on target. All right. Witkowski 
gets it out to his wide receiver. That speaks there, Mark Nichols. And Nichols gets it all the way out to the 40-yard line. A youngster who has been struggling through a period of injuries. Now in his fourth year, he's healthy once again, and he has great speed, great ability. <laughs> you couldn't ask for him, Troy, but it's better, could you? And you're be beating the best in the league right there. You sure are. Not by much. That pass was well thrown. Oh, that's exciting. I mean, you're happy to see that. Kid comes out there, you know he's excited. And that's not a good place to start on your own one. He has a lot of uh, guts to be throwing uh, at Mike Haynes. Witkowski brings the Lions out from the shadow of their goalpost. They have a first down at their own 40-yard line. That's Nichols in motion. Witkowski has trouble getting away from the center. The flag is down, and Witkowski is down at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Matt Millen got a running start. We call that a rolling start in track and field. Matt was trying to talk, him, <laughs> talk his way out of that. Didn't work. I think what Matt felt was after that last pass, offside to not, let's get this kid out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> let's let him know we're here. Here's Bob Outside, Frederick. Number 55 on the defense. First down will be replayed. It'll be first down now in five following the penalty. Ivy League quarterbacks are surfacing everywhere. Dupek playing. He's from Yale. And Kemp now with the Rams from Dartmouth. Now we're watching John Witkowski, who has replaced Gary Danielson. First and five. Witkowski now in trouble. And very calm, cool. Witkowski connects with Rubik, and there will be another line first down. Sims applauding the youngster from Columbia. I can't help but remember we came in here a few years ago and there was a number 17 playing quarterback for the Lions. Oh. We started getting fact sheets. Who in the heck is Eric Kippel? He had one of the finest nights. Uh oh, got another one. Well, that's Davis. That Mike like Davis yeah. limping off the starting strong safety. I just mentioned it in the first quarter that this secondary has been intact. Haynes, McElroy, Davis, and Hayes throughout the season. Now Mike Davis is shaken up. Boy, you hate to see this, particularly late in the season. You hate to see it any time, but when you think of the overall team, this is a really an important part of it. Mike Davis, he plays in the shadow, really, of Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes, but he is a fine, strong safety. I don't like the way he's kind of giving a little attention to that what appears to be a very tender left yeah, knee but you 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 fear getting guys hurt after you've already clipped uh since the playoffs it could have something to do with the Raiders are certainly not an astro or an artificial surface team and they don't really like to play and a lot of teams don't like that in the east we tend to like it because of the bad weather but when I saw him jump up and start running earlier I think he'll shake it off and be back in the game first down and ten the ball inside the 44 yard line for Detroit good catch by Ruby the tight end that's what you do to youngsters you go with the blitz flags are down once again Daddio, the rookie from Maryland, the ball carrier. And referee Bob Frederick will have a little meeting once again. Here's what seems to be the problem with the artificial service. Oh, let, something let's hear like this call. All right. And ball start. Offensive left yard. First down will be repeated. That was just a quick adjustment on the left side, and the Raiders were moving into a full blitz. Well, the main thing, on natural grass, you can dig, and, the, and you get some give with, with, the, with the turf. Uh -huh. And uh, on astral turf, it's much quicker, and sometimes you'll find yourself digging hard, and the ground really doesn't give at all. Just and, hard to uh, really. put a lot of pressure on your ankles and sometimes on your knees, but mostly on your ankles. That's the time remaining in the first half. The Raiders on top, 7 to nothing. Once again, important for the Raiders. They win tonight. They win against Pittsburgh. They'll have a chance to play their first wild card game at home if Denver can beat Seattle this Saturday. I'm going to tell you another story about AstroTurf in a second. All right. Witkowski gets it to Jones, and he breaks the tackle. Oh, and tough. just slips at the 45-yard line, where it'll be second down and a long 11 as we tick down to the two-minute warning. Both teams have their full complement of timeouts, three apiece. And we will get the two-minute warning. 
And young John Witkowski will come over to talk to Monty Clark. Get last minute instructions for the first half, and we'll be back in a moment. Kind of cute, John Witkowski started to trot back very confidently in the huddle. He turned around and, as though he'd forgotten something. The youngster from Columbia has taken over from an injured Gary Danielson, who it has been reported did indeed go out with a turf toe, which is a very sore, painful injury. It, it sounds a little weird in this rough, tough game of pro football, but it can be so painful. Those artificial surfaces can cause a lot of problems. Second down, long 11. Two minutes remaining in the first half. The Raiders on top, 7 to nothing. The ball is the Raiders' 45-yard line. Witkowski wide open is Jeff Chadwick, and he comes down with the first down inside the 30-yard line near the 29. Now that's standing there and holding your ground, young fella. Nice going, John. Ooh, you don't like to hear it. Mike Davis, whom you saw leave the field a moment ago for the Raiders, the strong safety, we've been told, has a bruised knee. And now we are losing Ken Jenkins, the starting setback for Detroit. Detroit conserving their timeouts. They have three of them. They have 125. They'll get around to them if they keep possession. Dexter Bussey. Ten-year veteran for Detroit comes into the lineup and he gets the call over the left side. He'll pick up about three yards. I think I'd call one now, wouldn't you? You got three of them. The former rushing leader of the Lions before Billy Sims arrived. Yeah, come on, Bill. Now we use one of our timeouts. John Witkowski. Getting to know Monty Clark, the head coach on the sidelines. We'll have another visit with him. We'll be back in a moment. Simpson, we're in the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. It goes through the mind of a young quarterback like this. Don, he had only thrown the ball five times into the, the night. You know, one of the things that might be a plus, his mind might be relatively clear at this stage of the game. I mean, if you're so around... confusing, why get bothered by yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, he's not... He doesn't probably know enough to be confused by it. I'm sure they... You know, he's worked, as they all do, on a daily basis, knowing what their game plan is, but, but probably didn't expect to play. But he's got to be feeling pretty good. He's four for five, yeah. and he gets started hot. Yeah. He's got to be feeling pretty... Uh, confident right now. It does. Help. Danielson walking along the sidelines. He went out. We saw him earlier. They were looking at his right foot and they did tell us it was turf toe and he is noticeably limping and in any event John Witkowski has moved the ball club. He, keep in mind this began back at the one yard line. That's a tough situation to bring a youngster into. Second down and eight now for Detroit. Witkowski back again. There he goes. Stepped right into Pickell. And had a little help on the outside also. In defense of, of John at that, the secondary had him covered like blankets down there, and he got good pressure, and that's how it happened. And Witkowski wants to use another timeout. They're down to one. And he's really getting to know him, Monty Clark. We'll be back after this message from the National Football League. Announcement brought to you by the National Football League and, of course, Tom Flores from Zanger, California. I might have had it from Kingsburg, where Monty Clark is from. They are right together near Fresno, California. Raiders now have seven sacks to lead the National Football League through 15 games with 61 taking the lead from Chicago. That's the time remaining. Detroit has one timeout. The reverse to Jones, who's looking to throw the ball back. Raiders are fool, not at all. But now Jones fires into the end zone, uh, trying to get it to Chadwick. Incomplete. That play was designed to come back across the field, back to Witkowski. And the Raiders were not fooled at all. Van McElroy did a good job. He didn't wave his arms. If he would have waved his arms, as you can see, you know he, he realizes he's beat. He's trying to get back to cover his man. And he does it. He starts to wave his arm, and he does it. So it's not pass interference. Pretty Fourth good down coming up as we look once again. Number 26 in the middle of your screen as he doesn't wave those arms. He starts to throw them up there. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Murray is on on fourth down. It'll be a 48-yard attempt. He is 17 of 24 for the year, and this would match his season's best. Look at those five guys right up the middle. Danielson gets it down. And Murray, the second most accurate field goal kicker in the history of the NFL, hits from 48 yards out. Detroit stays totally respectable with 41 seconds remaining in the first half. And they're doing it with a very young quarterback with a lot of records from Columbia, John Witkowski. 
with you Friday night. We'll be in San Francisco. We'll be watching Eric Dickerson of the Rams go against the 49ers. So much on the line. We'll be talking about that at halftime throughout the game. Also at halftime, OJ is going to talk to Jim Laffey about his reaction to Eric Dickerson. And then a week from tonight, we'll be in Miami. And a lot of things could transpire in that game. Hopefully, for Dallas, it's meaningful. We'll have to wait and see. And it could be home field involved for Miami. A lot of those things that are up there, go get it, go get it. Yeah, he says, right. The 49ers look so good. I saw them play from Minnesota. They just, they're doing so many things well. Well, many people feel the only team today that can really play with them would be this Raider team. I point out the Rams, if they win, will clinch a wild card spot. They would host the NFC wild card game if they defeat San Francisco on Friday. If the Rams lose that game, they could still clinch a playoff spot if either St. Louis loses on Sunday to Washington or Dallas loses on Monday to Miami. It gets complicated. It gets down there even to have Washington having to score 44 points in the tie-breaking procedure. Ed Murray to kick off. Clee Montgomery is deep, along with Doki Williams, an exciting return man for the Raiders. Montgomery from right at the goal line. Breaks into the clear. And Montgomery out close to the 30-yard line. The Raiders will have 35 seconds remaining. They have three timeouts. Roosevelt Barnes was down there on the stop for Detroit. Wilson, who has started nine in a row following the injury to Puckett, has been the quarterback throughout the game, and now Clee Montgomery. <laughs> this astros I mean, this artificial surfaces. I was going to tell a story. When I first came to the league, it was new to the league, and it was amazing how fast you were on it. And an old friend of mine named John Carlos tried out for the Cincinnati Bengals, and he was running a pattern. I mean, I guess it was Philadelphia. He was running a pattern. He made a cut, and his knee went right out on him. You know, blew his knee out. Marcus Allen on first down. He's out of the 35 to the 37-yard line. And now the Raiders will, I presume, stop the clock, and they indeed do that. They have two timeouts remaining, 29 seconds, and Mark Wilson now will move over to Tom Flores. Mark Wilson, one of those Brigham Young quarterbacks, first-round draft pick five years ago. It's been kind of back and forth for him. They, he took over for the season of 82, and then Plunkett came back and took over the job. And in 83, they put him in a year ago. We saw him in Dallas after he'd signed a brand new contract, tore up the Cowboys. Three games later, he had broken his left shoulder. Plunkett came back once again with one of those lives I spoke of and took the Raiders to that victory over Washington in the Super Bowl, 38 to nine. So Plunkett has been up, he's been down, but so has young Mark Wilson. Mark has looked quite he looked good tonight. Yeah, they've been up more than they've been down. down. Yeah, yeah. Many, many people feel the Raiders will not be able to make it through the playoffs without Plunkett. Mark, uh, since his thumb uh, appears to have healed on him, he's throwing the ball a lot better, and I'm, I'm impressed with the fact that he's able to find his uh, second and third receiver here tonight. Marcus Allen got seven, so it's second down and three with 29 seconds remaining, and the Raiders with two timeouts. Wilson. Trying to get the ball to Barnwell incomplete. It'll be third down and three. Looked like Cliff Branch slipped out. He could have even possibly been trying to hit Cliff coming out of his break, but he slipped, didn't make it out of that break, so it fell short. There's the big man they like to get it to, Malcolm Barnwell. He has had seven receptions thus far in this season of over 40 yards. A lot of speed. Well, it would have to be a Hail Mary catch if he's going to get one over 40 yards and now. This line secondary has given them a lot of room. The other speedster, Doki Williams, has been split to the left. Wilson has the time, yeah. and Barnwell steps out of bounds, stops the clock. He has a first down for the Raiders near the 47-yard line, 17 seconds remaining in the half. Same pattern that they called in the previous play. It's incomplete. They said that's still open. Came back through it again. Your old prevent defense. That's where that it's... You sure can sure run up the statistics you, on it. You really can. You know, it's really important for the Raiders to try to get something out of this. It would help the team morale, and it certainly would help their confidence in Mark Wilson and being able to move them with little time left on the clock to get some type of score. Now, 
Adoki Williams will go up to the top of your screen. Barnwell is also there. The speed represented by the Raiders wide receivers all at the top of your screen. Wilson. Oh, wow. He held on to the ball. They're saying no. He was out of bounds. But what concentration by Barnwell. And I'll tell you, did Mark Wilson put something on that? It won't help. Bob there goes the flag. Oh, yeah. That's a terrible mistake by Barnwell to get himself into that situation because the Raiders were getting down there close to where they could would need just a few yards for the field goal. Oh, I can see why he's uh, debating with the official. I know why he's upset, though. <laughs> Yep. Every reason to be upset. That's a really tough call, but Barnwell was obviously in. It could not have been juggling the ball because his back was right to the official who made the call. So now the Raiders with 11 seconds remaining in the half, two timeouts, are in a much different situation. They were looking for field goal position for Chris Barr. He might run Marcus on one of these. What do you think? Right or wrong, you never win an argument with men in the striped shirt. That's right. <laughs> that was my point. You just don't hurt your team by getting the unsportsmanlike call. Hawkins. <laughs> Line of scrimmage, that's it. In the arms of William Gay. Yeah, let's go and back in and we'll regroup. We'll regroup at half. Final seconds ticking down. And the Raiders lead the field with the lead. Mark Wilson. The quarterback, of course, he has a 7-3 lead over Detroit. We'll be back with halftime activities. Here now in the flesh is the former record holder, the man we've been calling old what's-his-name all day. Juice, what about the issue of the longer schedule? At the time you broke Jim Brown's record, it was duly noted that you did in 14 games something that he had done in 12. Is it significant, significant that the longer schedule helped Dickerson? Well, I don't think it matters at all. I think he's such a great back that eventually he's going to go over 2,000 again. And I think before he's through, he'll go over in 14 games, maybe even in 13 games. As far as I'm concerned, kids who are watching football, they're not thinking about breaking a 14-game record. They're going to be concerned about breaking in the future whatever record stands and whatever wherever Eric places it, that's going to be the goal they're going to be after. And being a football fan, I think that's the way it should be. What about your relationship with Eric Dickerson? You've spent a good deal of time with him this week. Yeah, well, we were being interviewed quite a bit this week, and he's a good kid. You know, he, uh, he has a belief, which is nice. He has a tremendous talent. He has a coach that, as the years go on, Robinson is going to always create the environment for him. So I think by the time he's finished, he's going to have all the records in the book. Uh, you know, I told him last week, as I said earlier, I said, uh, Eric, uh, to keep the pressure off you next week, you have the 49ers. It's going to be a tough game next Friday night. They're playing super football. Uh, try to get 180 or 190 yards this week. Eric went out and got all of them. And congratulations, Eric. You know, I've got a moment of insecurity here. Am I correct that Brown's record was set in 12 games, or was his a 14 game? No, record? no. Jim Brown's record was set in 14 games. Yeah. All right. So you did it in the same number of games. Congratulations again to you for your great career. <laughs> congratulations from us to Eric Dickerson for everything he accomplished. And we'll be back with more football right after this. Kick off to the Raiders to begin the second half. The Raiders on top, 7-3. to three. Ed Murray. You had a look at Clee Montgomery, number 28, and Doki Williams, number 85. Williams with the great speed. Second half underway. Clee Montgomery from the end zone. Oh, Montgomery gets outside. Bobby Martin is there, and he takes, takes him at the 23 yard. 10 at their own 23-yard line. Mark Wilson, the first half, 7 of 11, 92 yards, and a touchdown, and they bobble the ball, and Wilson quickly covers, and he'll lose a couple of yards on that. Raiders, I'd like to reiterate once again, know they need a win tonight, and a win against Pittsburgh next Sunday, and then, of course, they will know the outcome of Denver and Seattle. They play on Saturday, and should Denver win that game, then the Raiders, if they can win tonight and against Pittsburgh, will play their first wild card game at home the weekend before Christmas. And that's important to them. Second down and 12. Marcus Allen. Allen with that stiff arm. You hardly ever see a tackle made on Allen from that angle because he has one of the great stiff arms in the game. It's just like a right lead. Gain of about five, so it'll be third down and seven. Let's take a look at the stats from the first quarter, then we'll dissolve to the second quarter. Detroit, with their young quarterback, 
really put up some numbers on this second quarter when John Witkowski came in for Gary Danielson. He had a 47-yard shot to Jeff Chadwick for one of those completions. Just about equal time of possession. As a matter of fact, it is. You know, one of the stats is not Third okay. down and seven. That Kurt Marsh has moved to center. Dave Dalby went out in the first quarter, came back for a little while, but Marsh is now at center. Wilson with a lot of time. Wide open is Allen, and he comes down with it at the 43-yard line for a first down. Gary Cobb not taking a deep drop. Marcus Allen was there, but Mark Wilson just had too much time. On the stats that you see, you know, half times and quarters, one of the stats that's not there is return yardage. It hasn't been terribly significant tonight, but a lot of times the return yardage, whether it's a punt return, kickoff return, that can make a big difference. It puts them in a good field position. With some teams more so than others, yeah, you think right. of the Broncos, they're a big team on special teams, and you think of Seattle. The Raiders have never really been a big special teams uh, team. <laughs> <laughs> Much of individuals playing out there. Right? First down and 10, the ball at the 44 yard line. And Wilson is back again, and again he has a lot of time. Looking for Doki Williams. And a leaping interception by Bruce McNaughton. There are no flags on this one. Well, and he was touched back at the 8 yard line by Doki Williams, but McNaughton comes down with it, and Detroit gets the ball back, and we'll have a look again at the young rookie sixth round draft pick John Witkowski at quarterback. Well, Doki, I think, may have thought a little more error was in the ball. It may have traveled further. You try to teach your receivers, don't wait for the ball, attack it, go after it. And as you can see, Doki has fallen away from the ball. Right, what a and nice Norton went after it. Yeah, he sure did. Norton. Well, about 75,000 here. And they are booing the fact that Gary Danielson has stepped into the huddle. Well, Don, I guess that's well, East consistency. Records are records, and uh, he's got up here as a law. That was an awfully nice job by you, young man. That was a good play in there. Mr. McNorton made a good defensive interception. Witkowski is the quarterback. When the timeout was called, he came to the sidelines. The crowd thought he was leaving for Danielson. They booed. They like this youngster. He pitches out to Jenkins on the first down and 10, and Jenkins moves out over the 10-yard line. Taken there by Jack Squirey, the inside linebacker. Jenkins getting to just about the 12-yard line. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six. Mike Davis, we understand, will not be back for the Raiders. Went out with a bruised knee earlier. Dave Dalby has retired, at least temporarily, from offensive center. Kurt Marsh, the left guard, has moved to center. And Charlie Hanna, the left offensive guard, has replaced Kurt Marsh. Those are the changes. Second and six. Witkowski is back. Looks over the middle and he gets it in. And goes to the tight end, Rob Rubik. And Rubik was driven back. I think he was very close to first down yardage. And they drilled him back. Let's see where they mark it. Stacy Turan was in there for the Raiders or Mike Davis, the rookie sixth round draft pick out of Notre Dame. Third down along one. Witkowski, I mentioned earlier, sixth round pick from Columbia. Played on relatively weak teams there, but he set records for attempts, completions. Just under 8,000 yards in his career, 56 touchdowns. Had 29 touchdowns as a junior and 23 as a senior. He tore up the Ivy League. Well, they should run a shovel pass. Well, the Raiders bring in all their pass rushes. That ball deflected as Witkowski really gets hammered back there. The crowd doesn't like it. They've kind of adopted this youngster. <laughs> he was really popped. Maybe, yeah, they may have been booing, thinking that Al Zeno had come in a little bit late. I think what you said, OJ, I think uh, with a shovel pass or whatever it is, they didn't need that much yardage, so they just needed yeah. just a couple of yards, something very quickly. Yeah, they needed three yards, and with Greg Townsend coming in, number 93, you knew he would rush upfield outside. I think I'd have ran that little shovel pass right inside of him. Lee Montgomery at the Raiders' 42-yard line. Mike Black will kick somewhere around the six-yard line. And Black hits off a booming kick. Oh, it's low, but carries to the 25. Promptly brings it back out over the 40 to the 42. It was a 57-yard boot by Mike Black. Did not have much height on it, and Montgomery was able to bring it back out over the 40. We'll be back in the Silverdome in Pontiac with more of the Raiders and the Lions in a moment. 
you weren't with us earlier, this is what transpired in baseball just a short while ago. Gary Carter, seven times an all-star, coming to the Mets. Of course, the key man there for the Mets, Hubie Brooks. And if you weren't with us earlier, we've been watching a well-played football game on the part of the 4-9-1 Detroit Lions against the Raiders, who have already clinched that wild-card spot in the AFC Western Division. Mark Wilson has the only touchdown of the game, a pass to Todd Christensen from 12 yards out. Ed Murray had a 48-yard field goal for Detroit. Frank Hawkins over the right side on first down and 10. He moves out somewhere around the 43-yard line. Gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. It was Michael Cooper defensively there for Detroit. Well, the Raiders have had a history this season and in past uh, seasons of playing down to their competition. This year, I think, more so than in previous years. But in watching a game like this, I don't think they're that concerned. They, they're the type of team that never really establishes one thing. But at the end of the game, they want to win. And they'll have big hot spots. They had a chance to go up 14 zip. Second down and nine. And Wilson is back. It's in trouble. And he gets away from Gay. Oh, fires it is picked off. Don't throw that guy. And Teddy, the middle linebacker. And tempers are flaring in the, on the Raiders' sideline. Now they're flaring out of the field. We have a couple of scuffles going on. The sideline flare was caused by a couple of the lines going after Mark Wilson after the interception. Try to block him. And Van Teddy gets the interception. Wilson got in deep trouble trying to get away from William Gay. Threw another interception in there. That's two now here in the second half. I got a feeling that uh, Jim Prunk had better start warming up. This is what you see right there. He made a good move to get away from Gay, but there again, you don't throw that ball. You can see him throw it right there at the last, kind of just out of desperation, and Christensen was not open. So now Detroit has it back in good field position. They're at their own 47-yard line. Never throw late over the middle. That's it. Too many things can go wrong. Best field position of the night, starting position for Detroit. And you saw one of the reasons the Raiders have played down to some of their lesser competition this year. Ken Jenkins back in the game offensively, a setback for Detroit. Re Fake reverse by Jenkins. Nice little move by Jenkins. And Jenkins just powers all the way to the 45-yard line. He'll get eight yards out of that. Raiders weren't really fooled by it, but this little man, second-year man out of Bucknell, who seldom if ever fumbles the ball, he's only 5'8", 185 pounds, and he just lowered that head and got an extra yard or two out of it. Tough runner. Looked like Meadowlark Lemon from the Globe Trotters uh -huh. when he hit that ball there. Now you see me, now you don't. Now you see me, now you don't. Well, there is a Raider that is down. We did not see him for a moment. We take a look from our reverse angle, and it's Lester Hayes once again. Lester Hayes was in on that tackle. He was shaken up earlier in the second quarter, hurt his elbow, and the man we may be seeing before long, Jim Plunkett. They have some great fans here in Detroit. I think they remember the 50s when Detroit this is NFL champions three different times. They are cheering a 4-9-1 team, and specifically young John Witkowski at quarterback. Second down, long one, flag is down, and this is Jenkins in trouble. What a almost got out of it as he's upended by Turan, the rookie from Notre Dame. Well, Flag the, is down at the line of scrimmage, and Turan is down at the 46. Well, the Seattle fans uh, should tell these uh, Detroit fans that you start the wave when the other team has the ball. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Illegal motion on the part of Detroit. So these fans are doing the wave here in the Seattle. I mean, the Detroit players are trying to tell them to quiet down. We can't hear the count. I think they just want to get up the stretch. <laughs> Penalty options being discussed now by referee Bob Frederick with Rod Martin. And we take a look at the wave as it circles the Silver Dome here in Pontiac. <laughs> Illegal motion, number 87 on the offense. The down will be repeated. That was David Lewis, the rookie first round draft pick at tight end, who was moving a little prematurely. I can't believe they're doing the wave now. <laughs> Second down and seven, the ball just over midfield in Raider territory. We have 10 18 remaining in the third quarter. Like the Raiders on top, seven to three. Little learning is a dangerous thing. <laughs> Mark Nichols in motion. Boy, and he's got a good start. There Nichols, oh, patted it down. Oh, Mark. It's not 
the idea. Mike Haynes there defensively, but I'll tell you, if Nichols had continued on his fly pattern, he Good. would have been wide open. It's a terrific pattern in that he's, he gets a running start from by going in motion. Goes to back to the have a close side. No other receivers over there. That young man had to stay with him. Well, Mike Nichols was a number one draft choice a few years ago out of San Jose State, and the book on him is he's been a little inconsistent. He's pretty good running down the field catching the ball, but he doesn't catch the ball well going over the middle. San Jose State, also East Bakersfield High School and Bakersfield Junior College. Out of way, out of way, out of way. His name's Mark, too. Third down and seven. From the shotgun, Witkowski, the quarterback. Witkowski. Gets the pass complete to Chadwick. He's short of the first down, however, near the 45. It'll bring up fourth down and about two yards, and I think we'll see the punting unit. That was good position by McElroy that time. He uh, laid off just enough to let him throw the ball, and I got a feeling that he knew that he would be short for that first down. He didn't let him get past the first down marker. Mike Black, seventh round draft pick a year ago from Arizona State. Punted well tonight. Montgomery back for the Raiders. He'll guess with him as Black will probably be looking for the corner. Either that or he'll hang it high looking for the coverage. Fake it. When I was in Buffalo, we had a lot of games like this and we went to fake it. Go for it. Oh, he may have, he may have yeah. caught something. He nailed it. Yes, he has. Mike Black puts it out. Looks like to be inside the 10. It is at the 9-yard line, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Oh. Uh, Flag is down. What a nice effort by Mark Black. And they're going to bring it back. Illegal receiver downfield, and oh. Black will have to do it all over again. Well, that's Money a, Clark. Unfortunate penalty there because that was beautifully executed. Under fire here in Detroit. Ineligible member of the kicking team downfield, number 58. You know, one of the things down there a little early for Detroit. One of the things that's not helped Monty Clark's situation, kind of strange, but, but Sparky Anderson comes in here and he says, look, I'm going to tell you something right off. We don't win in five years. It's my fault. <laughs> and everybody, you ever heard a football coach say that? No, they don't like to do that, but Sparky... Baseball managers know that's true. <laughs> They're going to have to win or they get gone. Get good or get gone. There's Montgomery. Now it's stepped up to about the 14-yard line. Mike Black will try to do it all over again. Looking for the same sideline, and he has hit another beautiful punt. Will it catch the end zone? No. And it takes a Detroit bounce. Came right back. Black turned that over with the perfect spiral, and it took a Detroit bounce to the five-yard line. A 45-yard putt, but more important, the Raiders will start at their five-yard line. Good effort by Mike Black. Problems against the 11th rated defense of the National Football Conference, the Detroit Lions. In the last two possessions, Mark Wilson has coughed up a couple of interceptions. And now the Raiders at their own five-yard line. They lead 7-3, 9-13 remaining in the third quarter. Wilson looking for Doki Williams. Oh, Williams no. stepped yes. right in front of McNaught. He has a lot of speed. Look out. And run down by Alvin Hall after he had to do a little juking with McNorton, but good timing. McNorton had his back to the ball. Williams actually, I think, faked him just a little bit and came down with it. A 73-yard pickup. We're talking about a receiver adjusting to the ball. He was going to Doki Williams all the way. It's an interesting drive. It was going to be interesting to see how this drive ends. Look at Doki. A great adjustment to the ball. You saw Mark Clayton do that quite a bit last week. Well, Doki heard you tell him to do it a while ago, so he got on to it. It's rare that you'll see Doki get caught in the open field, but he was obviously starting from a dead start, and the other the defender Hall. had a running start, Alvin. Yeah. First down and 10, the Raiders on the 73-yard connection. Wilson to Doki Williams. Marcus Allen, right side. As he does so well, back against the grain, works to the 15-yard line, a gain of seven before he's upended by Cooper. I got a stat for you, Don. You know, the Raiders have started drives inside their 20 33 times this year, and they've only scored one touchdown starting from there. This could be two. This could be two. And you know, I, the, the Lions have a just almost the opposite of that, don't they? When they start, they've had more touchdowns scored when they started back from under their, behind their 20. Allen has retaken the what AFC <laughs> rushing lead. He has 54 <laughs> yards on the night. Second down and three. Allen. Oh, yeah. 
fine tackle on Marcus that. Allen by Curtis Green, the <laughs> inside left tackle in that 4-3 of Detroit. The worst thing that a running back can do is he's got to come to the quarterback to get the ball, and he's looking at a defender already in the backfield waiting to tackle him. He can't make a move because he doesn't have the ball, so he has to go get the ball, and when he gets the ball, he's going to get tagged, <laughs> and that's what just happened to Marcus Allen. Curtis. Loss of a couple, it'll be third and five. Curtis slipped that block rather yeah. quickly, didn't yeah. he? Now you want to tell the quarterback, pitch it, pitch it. <laughs> keep it, keep it. <laughs> The Raiders are in a Todd Christensen mode. Doki Williams split to the left. Out to the right is Barnwell. And now Barnwell moves over to Doki Williams' side. And Christensen is they were in a Todd moving. Christensen mode, all right. Coming off the line of scrimmage, and that'll be five more. Flags are everywhere. We got a second flag also that was thrown later. Well, you're probably, you're probably right. That was, was probably Todd's call. Delay. On the offense. Delay. But Todd wasn't delaying. No, he didn't delay at <laughs> He all. knew he was running out of time. He's getting out of here. But it'll be third down and 10. They use up their 30 seconds. 647 remaining in the third quarter. And the Raiders struggling against a 4-9-1 Detroit Lions team. It's something to see big number 87 Dave Casper come into the game. Because you can think of all those great years with the Raiders when he would be the man right now. Yeah. Marcus Allen, they keep it on the ground. And sliding all the way over from the right side, Doug English, and it'll be fourth down, and Chris Barr will be trotting out. Surprised? I was a little surprised. I know Marcus was happy. Those are on those third and obvious uh, pass situations, uh, that's when a back really wants the ball. He wants to break it, and that's when he can get his average per carry up. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, the defense of our team, uh, the Detroit Lions, is looking for it. Chris Barr comes on. He's 19 of 25. Has already hit tonight. And kept his string of conversions alive. Well, they still only scored once in drive starting within their 20. Charlie Hanna is going to have to provide the snap. We mentioned Dave Dalby went out. Charlie Hanna, he has done a lot of deep snapping, though. Mark Wilson is the holder on a 37-yard attempt. And Chris Barr perfection. Well, the Raiders extend their lead. They lead by seven. We have 548 remaining in the third quarter. Right. Number 82 is Pete Manley. He's back there with Alvin Hall and Chris Barr will kick off. Barr having just hit from 37 yards out. High kick by Barr. And this will be Manley. use it though and hesitate in that gap and he hesitated because he saw Chris Barr Friday night we'll be in San Francisco watching the 49ers the 49ers 14 and 1 going against the Rams here is the situation for the Rams if they defeat the 49ers the Rams could clinch the wild card the Giants can clinch the wild card then with a win over the Saints and let's take a look at this one if the 49ers defeat the Rams the Redskins can clinch a playoff berth unless they lose to the Cards by 44 points We've got a lot of things, and there is a, if a mild earthquake occurs in Colingo, California, <laughs> well then perhaps Tampa Bay will be in. Between 7 and 8 o'clock. On first and 10. Oh. After the 35-yard line, a gain of four, it'll be second down and six. Giants fans obviously are going to be rooting for the Rams. Yeah, Dallas not fans not are going to be rooting this the other way. A nacho, nacho Randy. Second down and six. We mentioned it's been a bad week for my pal O.J. Dickerson gets 104 yards on Friday night. He's going to get one of the other records, O.J., a combined total yardage from scrimmage. I wonder, is that a part of the aging process? <laughs> What's your record for? You got it, my man. Nice thing is you had records. Second and six. Witkowski puts one up. He threw it where it had to be thrown because it was just absolute dead solid perfect coverage by Mike Haynes. How many of your records have been broken, Dandy? I had one. I, I just, know. Pastorini got one. Yeah, it broke you know? my heart. I think Pastorini did it on purpose, as a matter of fact. I don't that was total fumbles for a given season. That's I right. Recall. And I think, he, I think the last couple of them were giveaways. He wanted the record so badly. <laughs> yeah, could have been. I don't know. 
I talked to Dan about that. He denies it, of course. <laughs> third down now and six. Yeah, 449 yep. remaining in the third quarter. How many games did Dan play? Yeah, that's true. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he had more opportunities. He played more games than I did to break that. Witkowski from the shotgun. Uh-oh. Steps outside of oh, Howie Long. Crack and run. Ooh, and Sean Jones had zeroed in on Witkowski, and Sean Jones is 6'7", 265. But Witkowski runs up there close to a first down. He is perhaps a yard short, and it's going to be fourth down. The crowd's not going to like Mike Black, the punter, coming out. Ah, yeah, go, 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 go. <laughs> That's an eight doll. Good effort by Witkowski coming up a yard short, however, and Mike Black is on. And there's Clee Montgomery. The Raiders have been getting awfully close to blocking a punt a few times. This time they have a return on. That's why they, no one really rushed the quarterback. This one doesn't turn over, and Montgomery will have an opportunity. And out of the 25 to the 27, Brazil is there for Detroit. That time, a 40-yard punt by Mike Black. Raiders get it back, and Mark Wilson talks it over with Tom Flores. He'll stay in the ball game. We keep speculating that perhaps we'll see a little bit of Jim Plunkett tonight because Jim Plunkett has not played in nine weeks. And with the fragility of quarterbacks today, you like to have your backup quarterback to at least been out on their field where the little combat has been going on. Down and 10 Raiders at their own 26. Wilson to Allen. And a good tackle. That's William Graham, the strong safety with a good effort against a very shifty Marcus <laughs> Allen. What are you laughing about? Oh, I'm laughing because I know Mark, I've talked to Marcus about that on a few occasions. <laughs> yeah. That when you're out there and they don't throw the ball right away, and all of a sudden the guy who's covering you starts running towards you, don't throw the ball now. <laughs> you know, I don't have a chance now. Don't throw the ball out here now. That's like that handoff you were talking about a while ago. <laughs> don't give me the handoff. The thing's gone. A gain of one, second down and nine. Wilson back. Wilson in trouble. And down goes Wilson in the arms of Jimmy Williams. He's an interesting young man, Williams. He was a walk-on at Nebraska. He weighed 180 pounds. Four years later, he was the number one draft pick in the NFL. That's work and dedication. Jimmy he Williams. Sick. He, he just pumped himself up there at about 230, didn't he? Ticking away with 325 remaining in the third quarter. Third down long situation for Mark Wilson. He puts his speed to the left. That's Barnwell and Dopey Williams. But the man you always have to consider. Of course, is Todd Christensen and Allen out of the backfield. That's Allen in motion as Wilson spreads out the coverage. Uh -oh. Putting one up again for Dokey. And off his fingertips. That was Barnwell, however. That was a throw instead of a pass. Explain that. Well, I mean, he, he just got back. It was He's not really trying to hit somebody. He just knew generally where he was going to be, so he's going to throw it down there. Maybe one of his guys will run under it. I guess if you have that kind of speed, such as Barnwell and Doki Williams, you just maybe throw it as hard as you can, huh? That's what he did that time. Here's Robbie Martin. Guy is in for the Raiders to provide the punting. Detroit's had a very tough time with their special teams, particularly the return teams. They're right down there at the bottom of the league with them. Only one of the problems that seem to compound themselves in a 4-9 in one season. Rush was on, but Guy hits a beauty, and he drives Bobby Martin all the way back to the 11-yard line. What a catch he made, though. The middle wide receiver did make a good catch, and he works it back out close to the 23-yard line before Derek Jensen was there. And remind you, college football excitement continuing on ABC with the Gator Bowl on December the 28th. The seventh-ranked South Carolina, who is 10-1, takes on number nine Oklahoma State, who is nine and two. And then on January 1st, the Sugar Bowl, featuring number four-ranked Nebraska against 11th-ranked LSU. Both games will be seen live at eight o'clock Eastern and right here on ABC year of the Olympics and of course coming up the 
Super Bowl January the 20th and the voting was held on the Pro Bowl today around the league. We'll be bringing you the Pro Bowl from Honolulu January 27th. It's been a magical year in sports here at ABC. On first and 10, Witkowski trying to get deep to Thompson. And great coverage. Hayes on the inside. The free safety. Then McElroy on the coverage also. Hester's having a tough night tonight. He's gone out of the lineup yeah. twice, shaken up. Well, Leonard Thompson has always been a big play receiver. This may be his best year ever. He has 48 catches coming into the game. But it's interesting watching Lester cover him. You know, ever since they made that no stick em rule, Lester stopped intercepting passes. I think he had about 10 or 11 interceptions one year when he used to wear that stick em all over him. And, yeah. you know, I think it's a psychological thing. I really don't think it's a, uh, it made him catch the ball any better. Second down and 10. Detroit just out over their 23-yard line. Witkowski looks for Nichols and in and out of his hands as Lester Hayes gave him a pop as he went up for it. The young quarterback, John Witkowski, he, he, he really missed him. He had a guy open that time and kind of heard it and let it go a little bit too high on him. Third down and 10 now, and the Lions will go from the shotgun. Witkowski changing it up, hollering out the automatic, and he just waited a little long. I don't know whether Alzado, number 77, was drawn off or not. I think he saw Don Laster just kind of lean back a little bit, and as soon as he did, it looked like Alzado was gone. You can't blame him. They've sacked Detroit seven times tonight. All start. On the offense, number 73. Yeah, you got it, Don. That's Don Laster, who has been face-to-face -face with the 14-year veteran Lyle Alzado. Alzado's had a couple of those seven sacks as the Raiders have taken the sack lead in the NFL away from Chicago. They're up to 61. Laster didn't move much, but he just rocked back a little bit. We see Billy Sims there. Hooks, Texas. They missed old Billy up here. Signed him a good contract last year, and I know he would love to be right in the middle of it. One of the more exciting runners you'll ever see. Still their leading rusher, and he hasn't played in seven weeks. Third down and 15. Witkowski in a lot of trouble, and he slides out. And now he goes down, Bill Pickell. When Bill Pickell comes in that lineup, he is everywhere. He really is. Rutgers. That will not be a sack. As Witkowski was to pull the ball down and was running with it, but it will bring up fourth down. And Mike Black, who is getting a little exercise here in the second half, comes out to punt once again. It's amazing. Bill, uh, Bill Pickell came into the game with nine sacks, sharing time with Reggie Kinlaw, who is back and healthy. That's a lot of sacks from that nose tackle position. Lee Montgomery. Raiders should have good field position. Montgomery is positioned himself at the Raiders 40 yard line. 149 remaining in the third quarter. And the Raiders on top, they lead 10 to 3. This is an example where that return yard is. Look at oh, that. I told you they'd go after it. Whoa, and the flag is down, and Black is looking for first down, but a flag is down. Holding. Oh, oh no. Oh, bring it back. Several big plays tonight have been brought back because of the penalty. They have plagued Detroit throughout the season. A very alert move by Black that time. Yeah, we have had it blocked. Yeah, we were talking earlier that they were coming after that punt earlier in the game. And on the last punt, they had a return on. But I'm not surprised to see him go after it on that play because they've come so close earlier in the game. Well, you know, you're talking about the return yardage. In the hands by the offensive team. Ten yard penalty. Talk about the return yardage a moment ago. Put him back there in the first place was Ray Guy's punt. Ray Guy got off a terrific punt the last time. He kicked the ball 60 some odd yards or whatever it was. Now they've got a little penalty, so it's Mr. Black's time to let me see if I can answer it. Because the Raiders are probably going to pick up some yardage on this. And uh, now Clay Montgomery moves up almost to midfield. Detroit has now been penalized nine times for 84 yards. That is has been the Raiders' 12th man. There's a good punt. Black gets it to turn over and drives Montgomery back inside his own 40. Oh, if you can just get there. Oh, what a block that was. There. Safe. Montgomery got a tremendous block. And gets it back close to midfield. Let's take a look and see if we can pick up the holding. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, he's holding him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not holding very bad. Well, he may have saved a few points. He may have blocked him. that punt had he not held it, by the way, too. That's tough on the costume. Yep, that was number 54 that was holding Roosevelt Barnes. So the Raiders do indeed get good field position inside Detroit territory near the 49-yard line with 121 remaining in the third quarter. Let's see if they can get it in this time. Well, all right. I don't have anything else to do. Doki Williams goes left. Barnwell is in a little wing position at the top of your screen, now moves in motion. Once Wilson loses the ball, coming away from the center. Twice. Covers it now. Oh, I think that's a third will be a loss of about four. Might be. Well, they got a new center. We've mentioned that Dalby's been out. And they're trying Kurt to Marsh has moved over there, and Hannah has moved in a left guard. Dalby tried to come back. He was injured in the first quarter, came back for a little while, but then had to step out as a very sore ankle. Well, I didn't know Santa had red hair. Yeah. I knew he was a football fan. Yeah. He brought me a football uniform years ago. That's so nice of Santa. He's always spoken so highly of you. Second down, 15. Wilson, very cool, gets it to Todd Christensen. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage and then stretches for three more. You've noticed that the game has gone on, other than throwing up, Mark Wilson has not thrown the ball to his left side. Uh, actually, he's, he's thrown the long one to, uh, yeah, and other than the up. Oh, that's right. Sort of, sort of right-handed when it comes time to finding guys. He sort of looks towards the middle of the field, then to the right side of the field. I always find and the Raiders are going to let the time expire here in the third quarter. Once again, they lead 10 to 3. And we'll be returning to the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan for fourth quarter action. But right now, this word from our local station. Stay with us. Certainly. And seven as we pick up fourth quarter action. The ball near the Detroit Lions, 45-yard line. Mark Wilson apparently going all the way as we open here in the fourth quarter. Wilson. Oh, oh and Oki Williams doesn't handle it. He would have had the first down. Wide open, actually. Wilson could have made that a little easier for him. That, that's, a, that's a real good point, Frank. I mean, you could look at it and you say, okay, Doki should have caught the ball. But it starts back the other way. The ball should have been easier to catch because he did have time to throw and Doki was so wide open. And I'd like to tell you that we're having a bit of a power problem here in Pontiac, Michigan tonight, and it's picking up a little bit. And some of our technical equipment that we like to keep you entertained with and informed is not functioning. Hopefully, it won't get worse. Great guy is in on fourth down. You've got a quick look at Alvin Hall, number 35, Robbie Martin, number 83. Great guy pulls it off the carpet, looks for the corner. And gets oh, it. and he did it again. Great guy led the league, putting it out inside the 20 uh -huh. coming into tonight. And this time he catches it at the eight-yard line. That's nice. What a weapon he is. I swear, he's, he is really a real plus on anybody's football team, and he's done it for so many years. I really would. I, I can see why a first-round draft choice is a great guy. Is certainly deserving of a first-round draft choice. I mentioned earlier that the Raiders weren't exceptional on special teams, but when you consider Ray Guy, I he guess is, they are yeah. exceptional. He really is. He just, he kicks it so high, so long. As Frank's pointed out, he's very accurate before he puts it. Now you say, I say, earlier, that they're very good, maybe the best in the NFL in scoring in drive starting inside their 20. Well, we'll find out. At the eight-yard line, first down and 10 Detroit. Jones in motion. Jenkins. They're all strong little runner at 5'8 and 185 pounds, and Jenkins just makes the surge and gets about four yards out of it. And they're going to mark it at the 13, so call it five. It'll be second down and five. Jenkins a free agent last year. After a couple of years at Philadelphia, last year mostly involved with kick returns, but with the injury to Billy Sims, Seven weeks ago, he has been seeing a lot of playing time. And doing a good job. Second and five. And Witkowski turned the wrong way. No 
this thing's happening. And pays for it. Stacy Turan, the rookie from Notre Dame, was right there. Edkowski, in case you weren't with us, has replaced an injured Gary Danielson, a quarterback. This is Doug English, pro bowler a year ago. He's a good big guy out of Texas that was going into the oil business, decided he's going to give up football. And he looked at the oil business a little bit more closely, decided he'd come back and play some more yeah, football. La laid out the entire season of 1980. I saw One little better tackle. Yeah, I saw him on a local interview here today, and he was talking about, well, you know, you're a forward 91. He said, I don't care. He said, boy, you go to that stadium, you start yelling, and you smell that cigar smoke. Something makes the hair on your neck stand up. I'm going to play. <laughs> Out of the shotgun on third down. The reverse, and it goes to Jenkins. And Howie Long is not fooled at all. Jenkins, however, turning it into something. Jenkins for the first down. Oh, with a big, superb individual effort. He got away first from Howie Long, and he gets the first down at the 20-yard line. Interesting play, a little variation off the old Statue of Liberty play. See the quarterback here. I didn't know he faked the pump. I haven't seen that in a lot of years. <laughs> if, he'd have, if he'd have kept the ball up over his shoulders, it would have been the Statue of Liberty. That's and you right. can see a little guy here at 5'8". Mr. Jenkins does an excellent job of finding the first down and getting it. And he held it over his head like he's going to pass. <laughs> Mr. Jenkins wouldn't have been able to get it. He would have to jump, jump up. up. Get it. A jump ball. We're in the fourth quarter, and the Raiders are leading 10 to 3. A win tonight, a win over Pittsburgh, and they perhaps can get the first wild card game on their home field in the LA Coliseum. That's what they're looking for tonight. Uh -oh. Whistles blow. Too much Too time. Too much time. Happens when you bring a youngster in there. Delay the game by the offense. Witkowski, of course, not calling his own plays, but you got to get it. Get it into the huddle and get it delivered. Here's the stat I was talking about, O.J. When you think about teams that drive the length of the field for a touchdown. Raiders once out of 33. All right, but San Francisco, San Diego, Milan. Those right. Those are the three teams that are on top, but Detroit is the fourth team. They've marched 80 yards or more to 13 touchdowns. See there? Well, they haven't done it often enough, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. First down 15, Take the following the delay of game penalty. They've scored two from the other parts of the field. Kowski. Interesting story, this young man. Came in a six-round draft pick, as we told you earlier. If you weren't with us, set all kinds of Ivy League records, almost all of them, out of Columbia. Two for 23 touchdown passes last year, 29 the year before. And he came in under the most adverse of circumstances. When Danielson was hurt, he took it over at the one-yard line and marched the Detroit Lions right down the field. It really got the fans hopped up as some... 67,000 of them that have shown up tonight for a 4 9 one team, but they have been cheering this youngster ever since he came into the game. That's the eighth sack. And the Raiders are now up to 62. Beautiful job of the kill. As Don and I were both trying to find out if Rutgers was in the Ivy League, the school that Bill Pakil went to, we found out it's not. Well, of course not. From the end zone, Witkowski gets it to Jones. We knew that. Jones works hard and gets back out to the 18-yard line, close to the original line of scrimmage, where it's going to put young John Witkowski in a third and long situation. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost and nipping at your nose. Christmas cold. trees hanging from the roof. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very strange but interesting place to put a Christmas tree. The roof of the old Silver Dome. Christmas spirit has arrived early. Yes, it has. Ho, ho, ho. Third and long. And believe me, the Raiders front down four will just nail the ears back and they will come. And there's one of them. Howie Long. Two of them. And Witkowski gets away from Howie Long, but it's deflected, batted away by Pakel. That's Pakel. doesn't have a way of being in the right spot, does he? He sure does. Howie Long made him duck first. Shoved him back to the inside. Got a little more pressure. Pakel was right there to... Looks like hit his arm or at least deflected. Fourth down, Mike Black on once again. The Raiders should get it back. Good field position. Kel's been everywhere. I think he has three or four sacks tonight. The Raiders have had the NFL defensive player of the week the last three weeks. Rod Martin, Mike Davis, and last week, of course, Mike Haynes. Those two big interceptions against Miami. They're getting ready for the playoffs. Miami they? also ripped off over 500 yards. 470 out of passing. 
doesn't get it to turn over, but it drives Montgomery back close to his 30-yard line. <laughs> oh, and he finds a big gap. He Could do it all the way. Mike Black is the last he Detroit line. The Both flags are down. <laughs> and Clee Montgomery, who replaced Greg Pruitt as the return man, a couple of games ago, that's his first touchdown return. It goes 69 yards. Well, like O.J. says, they don't pay much attention to those special teams. <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> Mike Black hit a good punt. And Clee Montgomery, he used to return punts in 80 and 81. And then Greg Pruitt came in and took that job. But Pruitt had plumbolitis early well, in the year, so they brought Clee back. And he did the right thing, O.J. Well, saw the you, gap and turned it on. You saw the great move. I think this is Ted Watt. No, that's number 30, Tracy Turan. He makes a nice block, you know. Oh, Wilbur, I mean, he looks like his brother Wilbur Montgomery from Philadelphia. Uh-huh. There you go, Clay. Chris Barr is on for the conversion. 10-44. Remaining in the game, and the Raiders strike from 69 yards out on a Clee Montgomery punt return. Raiders now move out on top, 17-3. And there's a the youngster. Way to go, Clee. Yeah. Looks like your brother also. San Francisco. Sleep at the Golden Gate. I can't wait to see my old 49ers and see Eric Dickerson. The Rams need it. The 49ers are playing like champions anyway. Should be a great game. Boy, are they ever. 14 and 1. No revenge for the Rams. I think the 49ers treated them poorly the last time they played. 33 to zip. Bar to kick off. Mantley is back along with Alvin Hall. Good effort to get out over the 20-yard line, going down in the arms of Otis McKinney, but a flag is back at the 10-yard line. Detroit, meanwhile, they're not thinking playoffs. They're thinking getting through the season, some sort of self-respect. They close out on Sunday against the Chicago Bears. The illegal block on the kick return team, number 92. I think that's the 10th penalty now against Detroit. And it'll take young John Witkowski all the way back to the five-yard line. He has been one of the interesting stories we've watched develop here tonight. That's Watch his, number 92 and number... Angelo eight. King is 92, oh. linebacker that came to Detroit from Dallas. And he got him right in the back, set him on his way. John Witkowski, he has been underneath his goalpost much of the evening. That's where he started, wasn't on his other goalpost. Down, Witkowski. This time, one of the few poorly thrown balls, trying to get it to Leonard Thompson and trying to work in front of Lester Hayes. <laughs> but he was reading about Lester Hayes when he was in high school. And Van Pelt too. You know, you think about it. Van Pelt just looks so much bigger. He just looked big and tall out there. He just doesn't look like a linebacker. Well, I think that that's one of the thing uh, reasons the Raiders wanted him, especially on that left side of that defense. They used to get it from Ted Hendricks. It, that's and right. you think about that uh, great Dallas team with too tall and Dutton coming from that side. It really impedes the quarterback's vision to that, you know, most quarterbacks will throw to their right, and they can't see. they got to throw over those guys. Second down and ten. That's a good point. See, I hadn't really thought of that. Oh. Howie Long was close, and Witkowski unloads it, fortunately, in the general area of a receiver. It was Jeff Barnes who finally got to Witkowski, but Howie Long just about collected him in the end zone. Howie Long is something a little different, and he is having himself quite a night, along with Lyle Alzado. There's Howie Long. I think Howie came into the game with nine and a half sacks, but he's had about 40 penalties called against Lyman trying to block him, holding him. Now watch Howie in the middle of the screen. That statistic is never... He just went right through, didn't he? <laughs> that is a stat, O.J., that you touch on that is never recorded. How many times do you force a holding? How many times do you force an illegal movement on the line of script? He certainly forced him out of the pocket right there. Ooh, that was Leonard Thompson that they threw to, but it was just so far overthrown. It was not close. And uh, that's that's not one of your better ones, but when you're back in there, it's backed up. 
That's the way it goes. That's Mike Black's going to come in and do the punting right now. Well, you say one thing about Wich Wichkowski. He started off 5-6, but after they, they sacked him one time, and he's had a pretty tough time ever since then. Let's see if Cleo can do it again. That's right. Let's see if Big Brother is probably watching him. Cleo says, I think I can do it now. It's going to be think, a little bit more difficult. I think I might be back with you now. Uh, we we've missed you. We've had power problems throughout the evening. I just lost my microphone. That was our chance, Don. I know, I know. Mike Black to punt from the end zone. Lee Montgomery again driven back as Black continues to kick the ball well. Oh, Here he's comes got Montgomery again. The last time, 69 yards in a TD. This time he slips and goes down at the 42-yard line. So the Raiders find field position once again as they begin to dominate. We'll be right back. For Mark Wilson, we thought we would see him. They want to work him a little bit. He was injured in the sixth game of the season. A torn abdominal muscle. Has not played since. Has been ready to play for several weeks now. I've had one of those, Frank, and they're the most difficult to heal because you don't really know how to treat them. You have to take some time and rest. He's a great story, Tim Plunkett. Yeah. Pulls away from the center, and again, keep in mind, he is not working with Dave Dalby, who was injured earlier. Kurt Marsh has moved over, and Mark Wilson as we have seen, has also had his problems taking the snap from Kurt Marsh. So Plunkett gets initiated quickly on his very first offensive play. He says, I don't remember yeah. it being this tough back in October. Yeah, I wonder how much time Kurt Marsh has worked at center because for most of the season they had Jim Romano playing uh, a backup center, and he, he played some games, and uh, they traded him, I guess, about four or five weeks ago. Boy, those numbers don't tell the complete story, a great story of Jim Plunkett. He has been cast aside several different times. New England first, then San Francisco, resurrected by the Raiders. He's won two Super Bowls after he was written off twice. <laughs> Second and ten, the reverse is to Kenny King. Oh, okay. Looks back inside, and he looks right into the eyes of Ken Fantetti. And there's a loss back to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and about 13. Of course, Plunkett is in there, as we mentioned earlier. They want to have Plunkett feel some sort of contact, some sort of combat, if you will. He has been out of the lineup for nine weeks. Uh, not that I guess he really needs it. Just timing, perhaps. Well, they've clinched the play. They have clinched a playoff berth. What they're really playing for right now is, and, and to them, it's very important, I think, OJ, is that home field advantage. And plus, Jim has always been a big play type of quarterback, maybe not always consistent, and this offense is a big play offense. Third and 13. exactly why they want him to get in there and get the feel of it get it back again he has not thrown a competitive pass as i mentioned in nine weeks and they want to have him ready he is locked in on barnwell that time Barnwell was pretty well covered it would have been an extraordinarily good pass well that would have been a complete but no. i think he had his mind made up he's going to throw there well i i have the feeling that they're going to need jim at some time during the playoffs especially if seattle wins this weekend that means they're going to have to go to denver they're going to have to go to miami and then they're going to have to go to seattle assuming seattle wins the game over whoever wins the central division and assuming that they beat denver you've got them going all the way there <laughs> here's this ray guy the team they've lost to by the way twice all this year robbie martin is back at the 10 but ray guy has been dazzling tonight punting the ball out of bounds guy doesn't mind taking the delay a game and he's going to get it so they'll back him up five the offense fourth down sort of early to be trying to uh, start to play the clock but i guess every 10 seconds helps when you have a 14 point lead raiders leading 17-3 with 825 remaining in the game a win tonight win against the Steelers, which could be disastrous for the Steelers next Sunday. The Detroit the Denver win over Seattle, and they would have the home field for the first wild card game. Here comes Robbie Martin. Good move by Robbie. Good move. Let it go, Robbie. Yeah. And Ray Guy made the stop. Ray Guy, a fine athlete, good defensive back in his collegiate years, and the backup quarterback. He made the saving tackle. But Detroit has fairly good field position at the 32. The Silverdome in Pontiac. Uh, the Detroit Lions with the football. They have played well tonight, considering their record and considering they're playing against the Raiders. Perhaps the hottest team in football at the moment. Oh. And Witkowski dodges another bullet and collects a pair of them as he picks up about four yards out of the 35. Brad Van Pelt 
was there again on Witkowski. You can tell he hasn't been around long. He hasn't learned the quarterback slide, has he? He gets down there. Yeah. No. Oh, come on, guys. It's not quite that bad. No. About no. Four years ago when we first came upon those bags down in New Orleans when they changed their name to Aints. Yeah. yeah. They had about 50,000 of them there one night. <laughs> they really did. Yeah. You, you look at this Detroit team, you got to wonder what's wrong with them because they have basically the same defensive players and they have a, a what appears to be what should be a good defensive team and they have some good talent on this offensive unit and you wonder why they can't win this year. Second down and six. Look at them. Oh. Witkowski tries to get the ball off Jack Squire. Put those big arms up, batted it away. Wondered about height. Witkowski is 6'1", a 205-pounder. And speaking of height and quarterbacks, we had a talk with Monty Clark, the Detroit Lion head coach, about Doug Flutie, who he is very high on Doug Flutie. I think he had a good point. He says, you know, you, you got to go with the guy's record. And what he's done, he's won. He's, he's got a good, strong arm. He said he'd love to have it. Yep, and I think he'd love to be here next year. There's been a lot of rumors around there that he may not. There was even a few rumors today, and I repeat rumors, rumors. that Chuck Knox may be coming back here, but they were only rumors. <laughs> I would think that's quite a rumor. Third and six. Witkowski, this time feeling a little bit of pressure. That was it. He threw that a little more quickly than he had to. He got it right. Thompson. He, got he it didn't right. really have to, and it'll bring out the punting unit. It's good, you know, the, the, the thing that he's getting, though, you know, you hate to get it when anybody gets hurt. You see a little blood there on his right arm. He comes back up. He's right. Hey, you're right. I threw it too quickly. I just slight panic in my heart there. Cold rush went right to the heart. Lee Montgomery has already brought one back 69 yards. That'll move him way up in the weekly stats. Mike Black on to punt. Maybe the special teams, when you're 4-9-1, are the, where it shows more than any place else. Because if you've been running down those things all year long, you get tired of doing that. Oh. Off the side of Black's foot, but it still carries to the 21-yard line. That time, Lee Montgomery tried to break it back inside, slips and goes down near the 27-yard line. 42-yard punt by Mike Black. Maturik is warming up now for Detroit. He saw a little action early in the year, 11 of 34, past the 32 percent, no touchdowns and five interceptions. Perhaps he should really warm up. On first and ten, Marcus Allen. It's a couple. As the entire front four works on Marcus Allen. I'm sort of, uh, it's sort of surprising that Marcus is in there, but I guess, you know, you got a quarterback like Plunkett. Plunkett, he's a starter, basically. And you want to give him the opportunity to play with the guys he may have to play with in the playoffs. But you would think with all time running out in a 14-point lead that they would start resting some of the guys. You know, he gets better with the work, too. He was magnificent in the playoffs a year ago. He really was. Against Pittsburgh, 159 yards, 154 against Seattle. And, of course, the Super Bowl, 191. Just keep him in high gear. They have really got a weapon in that man, 32, Marcus Allen. Oh. Second and eight. You can tell Jim hasn't played Plunkett in a while. Missing the handoff. Looking very rusty. Frank Hawkins was the intended ball carrier. Earlier, he overthrew Barnwell by at least 10 yards. That's why they want him in there working a little bit. I'll tell you, he's not a uh, cosmetically attractive quarterback. But somehow, the man wins. In his career, he passes for just over a little over 50%. But... That is a reflection, really, too, of the Raiders' deep game. They like to go up on top. He's been everywhere. He won the Rose Bowl. He's won a couple of Super Bowls. Marcus is, uh, you, you know, he didn't score down on the goal line on two tries earlier. He leads the NFL in scoring from uh, 
non-kickers. And look at it. You can see it's simple. Just simple pattern. He just ran a little Would you believe a little screen on the part of Christensen? I'd you saw 46 and pick off the linebacker, Jimmy Williams. That's a good move, mate. Makes a nice little zigzag on you, but that's when you talk about Jim Plunkett. He can look lousy, he can have an off night, and then he makes the big play. I might have just said that. <laughs> <laughs> But Marcus is the same way, as a matter of fact. Marcus can look kind of sluggish there, and all of a sudden he'll break one open, do the same thing. But Plunkett has always been a big play quarterback. He's perfect for this with Raider offense. Chris Barr with Ray Guy holding. And the Raiders move out on top 24 to 3. And one of their goals, a win tonight, looks fairly secure. They'll be thinking about Pittsburgh next week. And possibly a home field of the Wild. Allen. Marcus Allen, perhaps as good as anyone in the game, perhaps ever, coming out of that backfield as a setback. He got a little help from Todd Christensen, too, knocking off the linebacker, Williams. That was a little bit heavier than a screen, don't you think? <laughs> when Todd uh, ran it, <laughs> it was a shield. Chris Barr to kick off. Manley is back along with Alvin Hall. And this will be Pete Manley from Northern Arizona. Out to the 23-yard line. Oh, Marcus no, Allen. Marcus. He came into the night with unbelievable numbers already in his three years. The 39 regular season games, as we look at it again, nearly 3,000 yards rushing, over 165 receptions. Pretty nice little pocket to start with. Well, I'll it? tell you something. He's the one back... I believe that before his career is over, he's going to have a thousand yards receiving as well as a thousand yards rushing in one season. He had a shot at it this year, but in the last three games, I think he's only caught maybe two two passes. That'll help him right there. The new quarterback, Mike Maturik, is in, third year man out of Ohio, Idaho State. As I mentioned earlier, 32 percent in his previous. Oh, good shot this time to Nichols. And Nichols with a fine catch behind him. Comes down with the first down at the 45-yard line. Let's take a look at this scoring drive. And a whole bunch of it. 73 yards to be exact. Yeah. <laughs> Typical Jim Plunkett led drive. A couple of nothing <laughs> yeah. and a touchdown. That's, well, that is so true. That's not a drive. That's an excursion. Plunkett did start the first six games for the Raiders. They looked awful, but they won five of those six games. <laughs> On first and ten, Maturik back. Maturik. Not timing it out too well with Nichols that time as he overthrows by about five yards. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. The Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, where the Raiders came in tonight looking for a victory, hoping for a win next week against the Steelers, hoping Denver will defeat Seattle. And if that scenario should take place, well, then the Raiders will get their wild card game at home against Los Angeles. But they really are not in control of their own destiny, but they can contribute. Christmas did not come early. Second down and 10. That one's batted away. All right. And oh. Tickell tries to come down with it. I don't know who got the hand on it. Pakel had it. Evidently, he doesn't have good hands, but <laughs> I think Pakel is trying to be NFL Defensive Player of the Week. He went with us earlier. It was a very tight game. It was 7-3 at halftime. And the Raiders have slowly worn down the oh. Detroit Lions, and they now lead 24 to 3. Henry Lawrence, you see him there, number seven. You wouldn't believe it. He has an excellent voice. He plays at uh, and sings at some of the uh, local spots around Los Angeles. He even made an album. You sing very well, OJ. <laughs> Give me a break. That's on an open time. Third and ten, looking deep and trying to get it to Manley, the speedy rookie out of northern Arizona incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. So Henry did limp off a little bit earlier in the ball game. Yeah. But he still got came back and played. Kid's got a strong arm. We've seen that twice. The Jerk is going to stay on on fourth down and 10 with 4.17 remaining in the game. Can't say that I'd blame him. Leading receiver coming back into the line, Leonard Thompson. I don't think he's caught a pass tonight. He had 48, which is his career high. He hasn't caught a football tonight. The Raiders do that to you. They take away your best weapons and say, try and beat us with the weaker things. Yep, you're very rarely you're going to beat them with your outside receivers. Your tight end and running backs are going to have to catch passes to beat this Raider team. On fourth down, Maturik is back. Oh, oh, yeah. Cal really loves oh. Maturik. Pakel's having a night. 
<laughs> Dexter Bussey, the intended receiver, but Maturik showing a lot of guts just to stand there. He could see Pikel bearing down on him. Yeah, yeah, I think right. Pikel feels that uh, Howie Long wasn't drafted that much higher than he was. Uh -huh. Howie just signed the contract four million dollars over three years, uh, over uh, yeah three years or so. So I guess he figures, let me get on my job, and I can get a, some few ducats down the line. You can't say that I blame his thinking, can you? <laughs> Raiders have about good field position and a commanding lead. Once again, we're going to want to remind you, we'll be watching Eric Dickerson and the Rams go against the 14-1 San Francisco 49ers. That'll be Friday night. And then we'll be moving on to Miami, or Miami and Dallas. All sorts of implications there. And we follow this game as we look at Kenny King. The... No one has ever won 15 games in an NFL season. Think back to when the Dolphins were undefeated. That was a 14-game season. The 49ers can do it on Friday night. I have forgotten who 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 they lost to. Do you remember? Who, who beat San Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh? I believe it was Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. They had a chance to tie it in the end, and they had a few chances to score. I think they blew it. Second down and eight. 43-yard line of Detroit. It hands off to Chester Willis. That's his fourth attempt of the season. So we're seeing some of the players that Tom Flores would not be going with under ordinary circumstances. The stars of tomorrow. They'll have to wait a long time, particularly this man, for Marcus Allen to disappear from that backfield. It's awfully good to have, tomorrow, have that opportunity to do that. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Stars of the 90s. I should have said it that way. <laughs> Ticking down close to three minutes. The Raiders looking over a third down and eight. Allen now 57 yards on the night. The Detroit defense has been tough. They've given up big plays and they've had a lot of penalties. The flag is down as Bucket finds Todd Christensen. Now that was nicely done. Todd Bucket just paid for that. But Todd moved in there very well, opened up, turned around, just kind of slid a little bit one way or another. Appears to be, I thought, an offside against the Lions. But that was a nice move by Pluckett to kind of hold his ground. Got a light jump, Pluckett. Defense, number 62 is offside, and yeah. the penalty will be declined. First down. Curtis Green moving earlier, and it'll be first down Raiders at close to the 22-yard line. I don't think you're going to see Jim Plunkett starting maybe in the next few weeks, but no I don't think they're going to wait as long. <laughs> You know, the quarterback they feel of the future is Mark Wilson. They want to know that they can go back to Plunkett. And he's a kind of quarterback that can handle it emotionally, too. Well, as Plunkett has proven. Cliff Branch, and that's his first reception of the night and his 500th career reception. All right. All right, Cliff. Yeah, the guy saved the through. ball, I noticed. I'm glad he got that. Look at I've been that. watching him for a lot of years, 13 to be exact, and really one of the talented receivers ever to come into this game. He's given us some great feels. Remember those days, Don, with you Kenny Staber dropping back and hanging that thing up? Between the two of them, it was always exciting, and usually they, they did what we came to see him do. So Cliff Ranch has his 500th reception. Picks up eight, second down and two. Kenny King right, Kenny. gets to the outside, and nice he'll run over you, given the opportunity. He gets the first down inside the 10. Alvin we, Hall made the stop. You may have a little clipping on that downfield. Sam Seal looked like he was coming back to try to help Kenny and may have blocked his man uh, from behind. Did They're they going to back the Raiders up. Good effort by Kenny King. Didn't Kenny King come to the Raiders from someplace like Houston or from something? Houston? Yeah. yeah. He said he had a t-shirt once yeah. that says, I block for the Heisman. I block he, for yeah, right. Well, he blocked for Earl Campbell down there. He blocked for Bill, Billy Sims at Oklahoma. And uh, he blocked for Marcus Allen as That's he looked Cliff at Cliff, Cliff Branch. 67 touchdowns in his career. He's had 22 100 yard games, 500 receptions now. I love what Cliff said. They said, Well, you know, uh -huh. you're coming in as a wild card. He says, That's cool, man. That means six, six, four thousand dollars for me. He doesn't mind playing that extra game. Yeah, I don't mind playing that extra game. The ball plays just inside the 25 yard line. Second down and 12. Once again, left side, and down goes Kenny King. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be up a third down and ten as we tick down close to the two-minute warning. Gary Danielson, who was replaced by John Witkowski, went out of the game with a turf toe. Gary Danielson, a hot quarterback for the last three weeks. Oh, he 
Lions the Lions have, have struggled this year after winning their first championship ever in 26 years last year the Central Division of the NFC and the victories that they have had have come against under 500 teams Atlanta Tampa Bay Minnesota and Green Bay it's not been a good year for Detroit Two minutes remaining in the game, and for the Raiders, they have one of their missions accomplished. And one of them being, they will win tonight, and they will go in against Pittsburgh, a team that they have to be considered a favorite over. If they can handle Pittsburgh next Sunday, and they'll go in knowing what they are going to be doing as a wild card, because Denver and Seattle will get it on on Saturday. A Denver victory, however, and the Raiders will host the first wild card playoff, and it will be against Seattle. That's Chester Willis. Work on the left side on third and ten. And Alvin Hall was there defensively. The other thing they have accomplished, they have an unbelievable record on Monday Night Football. They now are 24-3-1. and one. Oh. Amazing. You know, it's funny thinking about the Raiders playing Pittsburgh next week. They must be considered the favorites. Then you think about Cincinnati playing Buffalo. They must be considered the favorites. Can you imagine Cincinnati making the playoffs this year? They could, could do it with a 500 record. That would be the first time that's ever happened. It could even be said to be likely that they will. Well, I'm happy for Sam White. I'm a little, up, you know, I feel bad for a lot of the Pittsburgh players if it turns out that way. Well, Sam was one of my coaches when I was in San Francisco. Chris Barr, 37-yard attempt. Ray Guy will provide the hold. That was a high snap. Dave Dalby not available tonight. Kurt Marsh in there, or rather Charlie Hanna. He has not been providing the snaps on the field goal unit. And Gary Guy had to bring it down from very high position. Sometimes it's difficult to do. Listen up. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. All right. It is intended for the private use of our audience. You got Any it. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Say it. Say it, man. That is good, Juice. 102 remains in the game. The Lions have three timeouts. The ball at the 20-yard line, and I can tell you, I've played on a couple of teams that have this kind of a record. It's tough to get through these final games. They played the Raiders tough tonight, sloppily at times, but tough. Maturik fires it in, gets it complete. It goes to Jeff Chadwick, and he'll have a first down. I want to remind you, the executive producer of ABC Sports, as always, Bruno Arledge. ABC's Monday Night Football, produced by Bob Goodrich and directed by Jeff Forty. Technical director Joe Chavo, halftime producer Peter Lasser, associate director is Kim Felton. And Maturik from the shotgun again on first down, throws underneath to Dexter Bussey. And Bussey up close to a first down near the 42 yard line in the arms of Otis McKinney. Associate director Kim Belt, technical manager Coach Coltrane here tonight, our unit manager. Herman Norris, telecommunications manager Mike Farrell, assistants to the producer Tony Tortorisi and Charlie Wiseman. The referee is calling a strange timeout out there, and I don't know whether it's for injury or what. He's trying to get a trainer to come out. And I'm not one of the <laughs> Lions, and I believe it's Don Laster, is having a bit of a problem. Well, it might be Keith Dorney. We saw him go up, have his thumb x-rayed, and then he did come back onto the field. And it appears he might be the guy that's coming back off, and it had, might have well, something to do with the cast that they put on his hand. Yeah, improper equipment. You have to have that thing wrapped. You can't have anything solid, anything hard. And now Dorney is complaining, but it was a referee that picked up on it. You're exactly right, Don. He, but can you imagine? the game he comes. I, you know, I don't know whether his, his thumb is broken or not, but it certainly hurt. He put a cast on it, came back and played. Al Zeno had a heck of a night, particularly in the first quarter. He kind of loosened everything up, made a couple of quick sacks, set a tempo for that defense. And they played well all night. Second down, short yardage. Means nothing with 28 seconds remaining in the game. Churik from the shotgun. Watts unloads on a Detroit Lion receiver. It was Robbie Martin, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Getting a little sloppy out there. Holding, and Detroit will be backed up. He look at it. Sean Jones who comes in. Boy, he's something, isn't he? Well, and he's also last week against Miami when they were chasing Dan Marino. Holding. On the 
offense, number 65. But he's fresh, Frank. You know, he's been resting be all there. Second down. Eight o'clock start for you tonight, which also, just to remind you, the night line will be a little close to the time you ordinarily will see it. Henry Kissinger will be there, and they'll be discussing Soviet-U.S. relations with a top Soviet official. And of course, Friday night, we'll be in San Francisco with the 49ers and the Rams. And a week from tonight, Miami and Dallas. Maturik. Go get that one, guys. And comes down to the arms with 10 watts out of bounds. 12 seconds remaining. Mike Maturik out of Idaho State. team without a touchdown since the second game of last season. And what they've really shown that they are coming into the playoffs as they always seem to do. Top form last week against Miami in a real great shootout. This team prevailed 45-34. Nice to see that Dump. man get to play a little bit, Jim Plunkett. Well, it makes that hole they dug for themselves by not winning their conference uh, appear to be not so uh, uh, deep. You touched on the offensive line of Detroit. A pretty good offensive line. They third in their conference offensively. Yet the Raiders got eight sacks tonight. The league in that department with 62. Maturik, that didn't work. We'll try this one. Boy, that's pretty. Looks like, yeah. Mike Haynes gets that one, and he's taken into the end zone by a Detroit line. That'll be a touchback. That is all through his fifth interception of the year. His 34th career interception. In my estimation, the best cornerback in the game today. He's awfully smooth back there. Yeah, I don't think you find much argument with that statement. Well, you might by Lester Hayes fans. And when you got him on the same team, why argue and quibble about it? And Lester Hayes and Mike Hayes now congratulating each other. Mike Maturik gets picked off. They'll mark it at the five-yard line with one second remaining. First down. Touchback that they marked in the arms of the defender at the five yard line. Well, we got one second, so that ought to pretty well do it, as they okay. say. Mock, of course, stops on change of possession in the final two minutes. This party's still going. This party is over, has been for some time. Let's start thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow. Eric Dickinson. Friday night. Friday night. Good day. Yep. Friday night, then into Miami on next Monday. That could be a good game, too. Yep. yep. That could be it. These are good teams anyway. It's over in Pontiac, Tom Flores has notched another win. A final word in a moment.